has been 5,113 days since Panama played in a World Baseball Classic game, and tonight they get a chance to do it in an incredible environment here at Taichung Intercontinental Baseball Stadium. But not only is Panama here, maybe the greatest Panamanian baseball player ever born is here with them. Mariano Rivera in the house tonight. Look at the shape he's in. Came out throughout the first pitch. I know, I was impressed. Obviously, he's trying out the first pitch. This is impressive. Now the strike to his ex-teammate, Chen Ming Wong. I love it. But you mentioned it, too. He's in good shape, but good to see this kind of presence with Mariano Rivera here in, China, in, in uh, Taiwan. There is the manager of this Panamanian national team, Luis Ortiz, a guy who uh, we got a chance to talk to yesterday, Ryan, and he was so infectious with his energy and his excitement to get this thing underway. And the thing that I loved most that he told us was, I told the new guys who joined us after the qualifier, don't bring us down now. We qualify yeah. without you. We know we can do this. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, obviously they, they qualify, they see the hype and, and, and the excitement that was built from the what we got to witness down there in, in Panama on home soil. But it's that team chemistry. You don't want anything uh, affecting that. He said, you know, be, he said, be, be a plus, don't be a minus. Let's take a look at his lineup for this game. Number one of the 2023 World Baseball Classic for Panama. You see that, Detroit, that Los Angeles Dodgers prospect, Jose Ramos, right in the middle in the cleanup spot. Yeah, and right behind him too, Ruben Tejada. We've seen the time he had with the New York Mets. This is a big platform for him. This is something Luis Ortiz talked about. Having some of these veterans with obviously some of the younger players like Jose Ramos. But for a guy like Ruben Tejada, we saw this in the first game today. This is such a great stage for guys like that to get their career kick-started again. On the other side, manager of this Chinese Taipei team is Yue Ping Lin, who gets a chance to trot out the most talented possible roster for Chinese Taipei. And that is an important note to make because six years ago, that was not the case. There was a bit of a schism between the Chinese Taipei Baseball Association and the CPBL, the top level league here. One team boycotted sending players to the World Baseball Classic, the Lamigo Monkeys, who at the time were the most talented team in Taiwan. They did not send their players. Everybody's on board in 2023. This team is stacked. Yeah, he mentioned this a couple times too. Every time we asked a question, he diverted the attention to the younger players. This was a situation you mentioned six years ago. They've started to rebuild a little bit. They've aged out the, the older roster. Now there's a lot of young, good young players coming up. As you can see in front of their home crowd, this place is going to be electric. And we get a front row seat right here in uh, Chinese, uh, Taiwan. Chinese Taipei taking the field in front of a packed house. Let's learn about this World Baseball Classic here in 2023. Some WBC 101 as we kick off this 20-team field, one of four opening round pools here in Taichung. Quarterfinals coming up into next week. Tokyo and Miami, that championship round will be in Miami from March 19th to the 21st. First round, round robin. Everything from then on is single elimination. Those pitch count limits, tremendously important. We'll talk about those a lot tonight. Yeah, we're gonna talk about these a lot. We talked about them, obviously they, they play the factor into how you manage your bullpen. But the pitch count limits, they are tight. 65 pitches, a big reason for this. Obviously there's pools all around the world, but the big reason for this is to protect guys in this time of year. But this guy right here, Chi, Chi Wei Hu, we saw a little bit of him uh, burst onto the scene. With the, with the Tampa Bay Rays in the big leagues, he's back pitching here at home in the CPPL, putting up good numbers. You see there a 3-3-5. Three, three, Take a look at the pitcher I saw. The big weapon for him is that changeup. He throws it both the lefties and right. He's kind of like a bit of a palm ball, so to speak. It's, it's one of those pitches he's got that good arm speed, and it is a weapon for him. So command the, command the ball, but look out for that those pitch restrictions is going to play a big factor. One thing that you may think, oh, 335 is not a bad ERA. Ryan, you pitched in this league, the Chinese Professional Baseball League here in Taiwan. That is a sparkling ERA for a very offense-centric league. It really is. And, and yeah, the, the, the emphasis they put on here, they, they you know, look, they love that the, the defense is a big deal everywhere. But what I noticed, and I spent some time here back in, you know, mentioned it, 2015, Offense, offense, offense. I swear, 70% of the workouts of the, of the spring training, it's all about offense. That's what they care about. You guys see some big backflips here. Someone gets into one as well. Alan Cordova steps into the batting box for Panama to get this thing underway. One of my favorite guys who I've watched on international baseball locations since he was in the U23 Baseball World Cup. 
as, at the time, a very young St. Louis Cardinals prospect taken by the San Diego Padres in the Rule 5 draft and jumped from rookie ball straight to the major leagues in 2017, which does not happen. And the first pitch to Alan Cordoba is down for ball one, and we are underway at 7-11 in the evening here in Taichung. In this atmosphere, it only gets better when the home team gets to the plate, and we will make sure to let these fans here in Taichung tell you the story of the night tonight here in game number two of this 2023 class. I was here as a player, as a uh, opposing player in 2013 in the World Baseball Classic, and it's... Uh, Electric is an understatement with the, the uh, noise they can generate, especially a night game. It's been 10 years since they've had the, the, to experience their team in front of them. It's going to be a lot of fun. Cordoba will step out as Chiwei Hu going to work, looking for his first strike of the night. Our umpiring crew tonight is Roberto Ortiz from Major League Baseball. Behind the flip as he pumps the pitch for the first strike of the night. Keetok Park from Korea is the third base umpire. Chris Siegel is the crew chief from MLB. And Trent Thomas, your countryman from Australia. He is over at first base as the 2-1 is blowing away. Three balls and a strike. And for a guy who gets the opportunity to pitch in front of upwards of 20,000 people, the nerves are certainly going to be pronounced early on in a game like this. Yeah, they really are. We saw that in the opening game today with the Netherlands, with Tom DeBlock taking a little bit to settle in. We saw this, leadoff walk. This is 100% mental. This is a nerve situation right here. Front of your home crowd. It's been 10 years, like we said. Exactly what we saw in game one, four combined walks in the first inning between Cuba and Netherlands. Starting pitchers, Tom DeBlock and Gabriel Rodriguez for the Netherlands and Cuba, respectively. And here is Jonathan Arauz. When you step into an atmosphere like this, we saw a really good atmosphere in Panama for those games for the home team, but the intimidation factor has to be off the charts. I mean, especially for players who, you know, have not seen big league time as of yet, haven't played in major big league moments. A lot of the young guys on the squad, this has got to be massively intimidating. Yeah, it really is. And, and look, there's that. Obviously, you know, we know about playing in the big leagues and you're, you know, 45,000, you know, crowd on Friday night in Yankee Stadium, what, what have you. But, and you've experienced this. Obviously, we got the chance to do the 2019 the Premier 12. When you play in Japan, Korea, Chinese Taipei, in this part in this part of the world, there is just a different feel, right? I mean, it's loud. They got drums. You're going to hear the songs the minute these guys get up to hit and when they're when they're on offense. So it, it's a lot of fun, but it does take a little bit to adjust to. This is crucial though for this Panamanian team. Take this crowd out of it if they can if they can squeeze a couple runs on the board early. And that is something that we talked about yesterday with Yue Ping Lin and his counterpart, Luis Ortiz. And for Luis Ortiz from Panama, he said, what we need to do is be able to score runs early because we're not going to take the crowd out of it. But if we can quiet the crowd down, that right. helps us out a lot. For sure. Here is Luis Ortiz, the manager of this squad in the qualifiers on home soil back at the tail end of the summer of 2022. His team rolled through Argentina and Brazil on the way to this Pool A first. That was over a strike, it's two and one on a route. Jonathan Arauz, a New York Mets farmhand now. Originally signed by the Philadelphia Phillies. Traded from the Phillies to the Astros. Taken by the Boston Red Sox in the Rule 5 draft, and he shoots this one out too short. Two gone. That definitely helps to settle the nerves. If you Chi Wei who in the situation, just get some weak contact, get something over the plate. That was that changeup. We've talked a lot about that. You're going to see that with two strikes, or even when he's on the ropes, when he's in hitter's counts, that changeup is going to be the, that weapon for him. Now you can just settle in. You've got two outs, bases are cleared. I can take a breath. And how about Kunyu Jung, who is perfectly positioned out there in short, that bobble doing no damage to get it to Yu Chang over at first. 
So two gone in that leadoff walk erased, and that brings in Christian Bethencourt. Bethencourt, one of a handful of guys on this roster, originally signed to professional contracts by the guy who is now his manager, and he bounces one back up the middle and on into center field. And after that double play a moment ago from Kun Yu Chong, let's take a look at this Chinese Taipei defense as a couple of guys who know each other from big league time, various stops across pro ball, share a hug over at first. The outfield, tremendously talented. They're gonna cover a lot of ground. Po Jung Wong, especially in left field, and Sun Wei Lin in right. Those two guys, fantastically talented. Of course, Chen in center the same way. Yu Chang over at first base, a guy who we'll talk about a lot as this opening round progresses here in Taichung. And the first pitch there for a strike to the spectacularly talented Los Angeles Dodgers prospect, Jose Ramos, it's 0-1. Ramos was incredible in that qualifier on home soil in Panama. He is now the number 23 Dodgers prospect. In those two games, three for seven, two homers, four runs batted in, three runs scored, and the homers came in big moments, especially that big shot against Brazil, which looked at his team, created really the biggest burst of momentum for his squad on the way to that win over Brazil, which punched the ticket to make it here. And we had Carlos Lee, Panamanian baseball legend, yeah. in the booth when Jose Ramos hit that home run. And that was, I mean, you could feel the stadium shaking from the reaction to that. Yeah, big Carlos Lee jumped out of his seat right in the middle of us. Strike to Ramos, and the count is in favor of who now? One and two. Yeah, but you talked about too that obviously going back to that game, Brazil and Panama, you thought they were kind of evenly matched, right? But, and Brazil had had Panama's number in the past, but man, there was absolute deflation in that Brazilian dugout when you hit that home run. Two strike noise from these Chinese Taipei fans. One, two. Third base side. You know, it's interesting, Ryan, you're talking about the atmosphere that you'll experience at a game here in Taiwan or in Korea or in Japan. You experience incredible atmospheres in Latin America as well, and you played in Venezuela, the Dominican Republic. The difference is there's so much organization to the cheering here where I will show you the cheerleaders, and I mean that in a literal sense. There's a man with a microphone on top of the third base dugout right now leading the chants, leading these cheers. Players have their own specific songs, chants, dances. The fans know all of them. Whereas in other places, it's just wildly loud throughout a game because of the raucous noises the fans are making from batter to batter. Here, it's so specific and it's so organized and it's so unique in that way. Yeah, and, um, and you mentioned it too. I mean, a lot of these fans, they kind of get a script of what, what the chants are, what the cheers are. You're going to look at him right here. He is. Ramos battling on one and two. And that, you think it sounds great now, Wait until Chinese Taipei is hitting in the bottom of this inning. Gets even better. And Jose Ramos doing what he can just to try to quiet things down, get into the rhythm of this game here in the first inning. Ball and two strikes for the man on at Bethencourt at first. Shiwei, who's one, two, on the way. High, two balls, two strikes, good at bat. Yeah, you can see how comfortable Jose Ramos is. Couple tough two-strike pitches. Just absolutely handling those pitches. That fastball doing nothing up in the strike zone against him. You can see why he's easily a top 10 pick. Uh, excuse me, top 10 prospect for the LA Dodgers. Pitch on the way to Ramos. Jose Ramos. One of the young guys on this squad, there is a very familiar name in the on-deck circle behind him if you see him in this inning, Ruben Zahara. Look at the nine-year big league veteran. You can hear the refrain in that chant, which is Hu Chi Wei. Now, 
in Taiwan, just like in Korea or in Japan, the family name, the surname comes first, and the given name comes second. So you would be Roland Smith Ryan, for example, if we were oh, using Smith that Roland Ryan. Oh, maybe. maybe. <laughs> The, I had to throw that at you. The hyphenated part around. Uh, so you'll recognize player names, albeit maybe in a different order than how you would ordinarily recognize them, but you recognize that as hitters come to the plate. Three, two. Ramos lines it to third. And Yen Ting Wu there to make the grab. Jose Ramos hit it on the screws, but he's gone on strikes. You hear this crowd roaring for their team. Coming to the plate next in Tai Jump. Bottom of the first inning in Tai Jung. Panama gone scoreless in the top half of one, and Chinese Taipei starting lineup looks like this as announced by Yue Ping Lin, the manager, and it is a loaded one. You see the highlighted man there in the two spot, Lee Lin, not only the CBBL, CBBL Triple Crown winner in 2022, also the league's most valuable player, and you think, well, that's impressive. They've also got a guy in the sixth spot who also hit for the Triple Crown in his career in Po Young Wong. A lot of talent throughout this lineup. We'll talk about it as we roll one through nine. Another pitcher's mound tonight, Ryan, is Umberto Mejia for Panama. And we got a really good look at Umberto Mejia. Obviously, a little bit of time with the big leagues, more recently with the D-backs, but we got a great look at him during the qualifiers in Panama. He was brilliant. I think for Umberto Mejia, we talked about his teammate Ruben Tejada. This is a big stage for this young man. Throws a ton of sinking fastballs, slider, changeup. Big matchup right here, trying to get adjusted to the noise. The horns, the drums, everything else gets settled in. Sung Cho Chung is the leadoff man, and he goes after the 1 0 pitch and serves it out of the left field. Where Alan Porter the back pedal and puts it away for him. Right There's a scouting report, what we're anticipating. We'll see tonight from Alberto Mejia, the right hander, who settles in without number one on the second pitch. Yeah, 26 years old, six, six foot four, low 90s fastball. Has plenty of movement, plenty of sink. Look at this too. This is a projection for Alberto Mejia. He's been a starting pitcher in the big leagues, but a lot of scouts say, look, he's stuff can play up in the strike zone. He starts to mix up the two seam, the four seam. Like I said, this is a big stage for this young man. I he's had that second shot of that big career. Early count swings from Chinese Taipei is Lee Lin, the reigning CBBL MVP. Skies one foul, 0 and 1. One thing you'll see with Alberto Mejia is just the tempo as well. Really impressed in Panama. Got the ball through it, and a ton of strikes. He lives right there, down and into this right hand here. He's going to get plenty of free contact. that we are calling this the Festival of Baseball, this 2023 World Baseball Classic. Yeah, it looks like he held up. Need to chase up the strike zone. Look very stuff, look very stuff playing up. So you can see him, two strikes. Trying to raise that eye level a little bit. You can see just that, he's got that presence, that good tempo. Hey, just one adjustment too, Tyler, as you're watching the uh, cheers, the chants. Pitching with the music. You don't see that in the United States. Then holds this one back up the middle. A little tough communication there, and he's going to beat it out. As Tejada and Arauz were, I think, both anticipating getting to that ball. Arauz with Tejada cutting across on the easier throw, and Lee Lin is aboard on the bouncer to short. And just too much speed. See that contact, they, they value that contact with two strikes, just trying to put the ball in play. Look at this, straight out of the box, there's too many bounces. Right here for Ruben Tejada. That one goes, an infield single for Lee Lin. 
brings up Zhu Wei Lin. behind Umberto Mejia. Ramos is probably the highlight of this group in center field, but Ryan, really talented all around the diamond. Yeah, they really are. You see Ruben Tejada, the New York Met playing shortstop, Jose Ramos, Manning is center field, Luis Castillo, Alan Cordoba. Then left field, right field. Good defensive team. Berto Mejia, get that, get that tempo back, get that rhythm back, back to strike Man, runners at first and second, one out. It just got goosebumps. Everybody stood up at the exact same time for Yu Chang. This atmosphere is unreal. Ball one. We talked about in the open, January 1st, announced that he wasn't going to make himself available be here in this World Baseball Classic. Taiwanese fans were not having it at all. Foul ground to first. Daniel Santa Maria, two gone. That's a big out. Quick out to start to lose that command a little bit here in the first inning. Obviously, pitch count's gonna be a factor. Give it a good check, and you got two outs. That'll bring up the NSYNC Blue, the third baseman. Man, even after the out, the song doesn't stop, the chants don't stop. Left-handed hitting Blue. Trying to get his team on the board here in the bottom of the first. It's a workout. You really come to a game here and be a part of it. You'll be on your feet. You'll get a chance down. And that crushing hot dog in the middle of the game. I don't know if I'd survive as a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have the cardio stamina. No, I'll never forget when you and I are in Japan going at the right field and, see, and, and seeing the script of the chance and trying to be a part of it as I'm wild out. hitter out of the five spot it is important to keep that in mind because as we saw in the day game the ball does not travel great to left field here now that may change at night but left-handed power hitters seem to have an advantage with how this ballpark plays who fouls that one in the screen so definitely something to keep in mind as cool a goes along okay, get away with a possible middle right there 94 miles per hour middle, center cut there he is. Dude. Have to get away with Fossil's Mariano Rivera. Cut Fossil's on the hand the whole day. Two balls and two strikes on Yen Tin Wu. 
Wu, a member of the Seibu Lions in Nippon Professional Baseball in Japan. Seventh round pick in 2015 by the Lions. Two two coming. Three balls and two strikes. This is a pattern we're seeing from Bertha McGee. Just not able to execute with two strikes. Get the two strikes with ease. Trying to do a little too much to put these hitters away. Runners will be in motion on this 3-2 pitch to Wu. Lee Lin at second base, to Wei Lin at first. Well, he is set, 3-2 pitch. Driven in the air, down the right field line, long run for everybody, and that one's gonna get back into the seats. Uh, this ball finds some cross in that outfield. This place will be rocked. That's how the first thing. Mejia trying to get out of this first inning. We're waiting. Only had to play two games 
at Asadio Rod Carew in Panama City to punch their ticket here to Taichung back in the fall. Yeah, the pitching was absolutely dominant. We're getting a chance to see Umberto Mejia. Obviously, different lineups he's facing. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, nothing against Argentina, who he faced down there, but absolutely dominant. And they, they took care of that in literally two games. Ready to roll back, right back into the World Baseball Classic. 11 0 win over Argentina in game number one for Panama back on October 1st. And then in game number two, Panama knocked off Brazil on October 4th. But that was in the qualifier. In the main tournament, it has been 27 straight innings. 28 counting the first since Panama has scored in a World Baseball Classic tournament game. Had success in the qualifier, had some success in prior qualifiers as well in 2012 and 2016, fell just short of making it to the main tournament. But this is a Panama team that not only has struggled to score runs and struggled to string hits together, they have not ever put a game in the win column in the main tournament. And not to mention the layoff, too. You see that 2006, obviously, then 2009. They have waited this long to get back to the main stage. 14 years, as Jose Ramos will tell you, he was a very young dude the last time this team played in the World Baseball Classic. In fact, he was just past his eighth birthday. Christian Bethencourt. Right. Maria, those two guys, former teammates in the Atlanta organization. Moving to high, it takes strike three. First strikeout of the night for Chi Wei Hu, one up and one down in the second. Nice little break ball, getting settled in. See that knuckle up on that pitch. Perfect spot. That brings up Erasmo Caballero. Caballero is the only player on this Panama roster to have never signed with a major league organization. He plays for Chiriqui in Panama's top level professional league, Pro Base, as it is known. It's a game. Several years ago in Cherokee Province, the city of David, and there is a member of this coaching staff, one of the hitting coaches on Luis Ortiz's staff, Victor Preciado. And if that last name sounds familiar, it is because his son, Reginald Preciado, from the Chicago Cubs organization, was originally signed by the San Diego Padres a fantastically talented young prospect. Bouncing ball out to short. Nice pick out there by Chung, and his throw is on target, two away. Uh, Chung getting on that one knee. Making a good throw, too. That's the one thing I noticed. On the left-hand side of the infield, when it comes to defense in Chinese Taipei, you don't have the same arm strength you're used to seeing in the U in United States or even Latin America. There's some good arm strength right there across the infield. Good stretch by Yu Chang as well. And with two gone, here is Luis Castillo. Castillo from Agua Dulce. Last played to minor league baseball in the Detroit Tigers organization back in 2013. Castillo in pro base, the professional league in Panama, plays for Cocle. Member of the squad that participated in the 2016 qualifiers, and he serves his team's second hit of the night out in the left. Yeah, this Panama team has such an assortment of levels. You've got guys obviously playing down in Mexico, you've got major leaguers, former major leaguers, big prospects. Really a mixed bag. A lot of unknowns too. This is a good piece of hit. Get the fastball down and away. Serving that ball in the left field. Another interesting thing about this Panama squad, and we talked about this with Luis Ortiz yesterday, was baseball has lost some ground with 
young athletes in Panama, due in large part to the success that Panamanian soccer has had reaching the World Cup, building a terrific outreach process as that one's in off the glove of Uche Gao behind the plate. And that's going to enable Luis Castillo to move up. And Luis Ortiz told us it's not enough for us to come out and qualify for the World Baseball Classic. We have to win, and we have to show young athletes in Panama that baseball is a very cool thing to be a part of again. We have to give them something to aspire to. So it's more than just coming out here trying to play well in Chinese Taipei. This is really a chapter in Panamanian baseball history in which Luis Ortiz wants these guys to be able to put a stamp on the next chapter for baseball in Panama. Yeah, there's a lot attached to these games too. You, you look at this at this level, obviously, you know, these guys obviously playing the major leagues, joining their team, guys who are playing all over the world, whatever, what, what have you. But coming from a, a non-baseball country like myself, obviously coming from Australia, there's so much riding on young eyes when you're talking about young players, young kids who look up to their, you know, their, their favorite players or whoever it may be. You want them to stay engaged in the game. There's no better chance to do that when you see Panama across the chest of some of your heroes. Jose Ramos looking on as Jose Caballero tries to get his team into the lead. Takes that pitch for a strike. It's one and two. Change up. That did go as a pass ball, by the way, charged to Gao a moment ago. That enabled Castillo to move into scoring position as a gorgeous Orange moon rises over one of the light towers out of right field. One two pitch on the way. Caballero staying alive. Look at that. Just a sea of tranquility out there. Wow. You're really white to say that. You're with the Apollo missions landed. Um, for those of the Australians here at Land on the Moon Coast. <laughs> Out there, <laughs> you're crushing BBs. You get it, you're in Australia. One two pitch on the way. Left side, and another nice pick out there by John. Throw the first in time to get Caballero. Two spectacular plays by Kun Yu Jong out at short, and we are headed to the bottom of the second inning. Panama leaves a man aboard, scoreless through one and a half at Tai Jung Intercontinental Baseball Stadium. Panamanian players of all time in attendance here inside John 2019 Hall of Famer and the all-time saves leader in Major League Baseball history Mariano Rivera Mariano Rivera not only here to cheer on Panama but a guy who is advancing the prospects of international baseball with a project called Baseball United he is part of a group that's trying to launch the first baseball league in the Middle East which has been a fascinating venture to watch. Came out, fired a strike in for a uh, ceremonial first pitch to his former teammate, Jim McMong. That's the leadoff man for Chinese Taipei. Punches a single out into left center. And Kun Yu Jong, who had a couple of spectacular plays, making nice picks out at short in the top half of this inning, gets his team started with his first hit in the 2023 Classic in the bottom half. Yeah, he's dialed hit right now. You mentioned some of those plays he made. In that inning, I'll tell you what, sometimes when you make that play in the, in the field or you get the crowd fired up or whatever it may be, it carries over offensively. You get that little bit, bit of extra confidence, those win, that wind in your sails. Here he is, getting the fastball to hit. That brings up the catcher, Yuchi Gao. Gao, one of three catchers on this roster for Chinese Taipei. Plays his ball in the Chinese Professional Baseball League in this ballpark, the CTBC Brothers. Big strike one there. You 
want to know what this World Baseball Classic experience is like, we're going to let you take a listen to these fans and how they serenade their starting catcher tonight, you check out. That play by Christian Bethencourt, who was able to get the batter runner, Yuji Gao, out in front of the plate, actually knocked him down, and then got the out on Jung, headed to second. So that turns in to a 1-6 double play. And Wei Ping Lin, I believe, is going to contend that Bethencourt prevented Gao from having an opportunity to run to first. Good night look at him. First of all, it be a situation where he's worried. You're going to ask if it was going to be fair, if it was going to be covered. If anything, it's runners interference in that situation. There's really not a whole lot to go off. You know what else I'm wondering, too, is if the conversation may be he never tagged him with the ball. Tagged with the glove. He had the ball in the bare hand. They did get this out at second base. Although that would not have been a force play at that point with the batter out and then went to first to get the out there. Yeah, really. So actually it just turns into a double play by going one, six, three. The out was not recorded on Gao on the ball off his bat. So it turns into a one, six, three double play. That's the clarification. Well, yeah, the only argument Lin, the manager, would have had if that ball went foul, but obviously this is the instruction. Because this collision right here, this is runner's interference. I said clear that lane for Bethancourt to make the play. You know, like you said, you never tag it, but it doesn't matter anyway. Got the force runner at second base. Heads up. No hesitation. Massive break for Umberto Mejia. And no obstruction call there. I mean, that's a play that you're making on a ball that's right in your area of your Bethancourt, so there's no conversation there. So two gone, and all of a sudden, Chichun Chun comes to the plate with the bases empty and bounces this one foul, first base side. And what a break for Umberto Mejia as well. Trying to find a little bit of rhythm. He was on the ropes in that first inning. Not only that, too, look at the pitch count, 35. All of a sudden, you, you're going into this inning with nine out. Having to battle away, trying to keep that pitch count under wraps. And now, two out in the second inning, 35. It's fouled back into the screen. Trying to get his team back into the dugout here for the third. Here's that change up again, just having a tough time executing the two strikes. One of these counts get the two strikes quickly. Flying back up the middle and picked on a hop out at short by Ruben Zahada. Long throw in time to get him for the final out of the second inning. What a play by the veteran Ruben Tejada to close the inning. The leadoff single does no damage as Humberto Mejia getting some help from his defense. We are through two scoreless, headed to the top of the third inning in tight jump. First baseman Jadiel Santa Maria will lead things off for Panama in the top of the third and first pitch swinging. Laces one to left field. That's down for a base hit. Santa Maria digging around first base, headed for second, and he's in there with a leadoff double to start things in the third for Panama. It's a little broken bat hit. Hustling out of the box right away. There's a chance to get himself into scoring position. We talked about 2006, 2009, runs come at a premium for this Panamanian team. Second, third, fourth bounce, and you know what? I've got two right here. 
Yadiel Santa Maria putting himself in scoring position. One pitch into the third, and Chile Hu will work from the stretch. The man in scoring position as we go back to the top of the order, and Alan Cordoba. Cordoba, you see there, the numbers were not great for him last season with AAA Louisville in the Cincinnati Reds organization. He was let go by the Reds. But then he landed with Union Laguna in the Mexican League, and over 30 games, 115 plate appearances, he batted 431, 478, 647 for an 1125 OPS. He also played 40 games with Obregón in the Mexican Pacific Winter League. Not quite as gaudy of numbers there, but still hit 242. And that has always been the calling card for Alan Cordoba. He's been a fantastic hitter throughout his professional career to the point that it almost may have stunted the way he was in the process of developing. Alan Cordoba, a fantastic case study in the Rule 5 draft. He was originally a St. Louis Cardinals prospect, Florida Gulf Coast League most valuable player in 2015, batting champion in the then short season Appalachian League in 2016. And then he was taken in the major league phase of the Rule 5 draft that offseason. And the San Diego Padres had to keep him on the major league roster for the entirety of the 2017 season in order to keep him in their organization. So at 21 years old, having never played above short season ball, he played 100 major league games with the Padres and still managed to bat 208 with a 579 OPS. And those numbers, you look at those numbers for a big leaguer, they're obviously well below average, but that's a guy who had never played above short season ball, was only 21 years old. Yeah, it's such a tough part, those rule five. Those kids who come out of A ball, they get picked up in the rule five. They have that space from on the roster. They have to stay there, like you said. I was a major league rule five. I did make the team. I remember going back. It's one of the best things that really happened you know, in my career, essentially. Because you lose that year of development. Cordoba then in 2018 was back in the minors. Started to make his climb through high A, double A. Trying to get a bunt down there. That may have gotten him on the right hand. Already early in this game, we're in the third inning. We've seen the bunt, either shown, fouled off, double play. This is tournament style baseball. We've seen the lost part of bunting in the major leagues. Maybe it might make a comeback, who knows? The man of the ship. This is something you've got to start generating offense early. See, oh, he's getting that index finger. Ball sinking in off the barrel. And Alan Cordoba. I mean, holding the bat the right way to drop a bunt down with his hand behind the bat. That just came down below the bat and got him. But back in there on 2-2. Two two. Yadiel Santa Maria in scoring position two stations away. 2-2 two two pitch. That does not feel good right now for Cordoba. That finger is, that index finger is throbbing. You're a pitcher, you want to just kick the ball back and throw it because you know the guy 60 feet away is going to look at that pain. Chinese Taipei got double barrel. Arms um, going right now. Xi Peng Chen, the left hander, and Quan Wei Chen, the right hander. 2 2. Cordoba on the ground, two thirds. Speared out there by Anton Goldman. That was off of the foot of Cordoba, so we'll get another one here. Comfortable at bat. Still smiling. He's good. Ooh, off the toe. You can wear the shin guard, and it seems like foul balls will still find whatever part of your body is exposed. Right off the front of that foot. Cordoba getting beat up this at bat. Chi Wei Hu trying to finish him off here with leadoff man aboard in scoring position in the third. Another 2 2. The quarterback is staying alive. Top at bat. Two strikes. Fallon pitches off. See that pitch count? 45. Remember, once he goes 50 plus, essentially he is done for this pool play. Chi Wei Hu. 
have broken a hand, may have broken a foot in this at bat. <laughs> Still in there, battling on 2-2. Pitch on the way from Hu. A quarter of a fool. And there is strikeout number two for Chi Wei Hu, out number one in the third. And that is the changeup, Chi Wei Hu. Big swing and miss pitch. We haven't seen a whole lot of swings and misses. A lot of foul balls, but look at this. Run in on the hands, that's filthy. So one out. Jonathan Arauz will step in. Arauz with a 6-3 round out in the first inning. First inning. Again, Ryan was going to wear this today, and I said, you know, day one, maybe go with the suit instead of the mascot costume. Well, in fact, Tyler, when I pitched here, I was such a fan favorite. They actually made a giant <laughs> mascot like that. Swinging a drive off the bat. Easy play out there for William Wong. Two gone. I would pay all of my money for a giant mascot for <laughs> Ryan Rollins Smith. Look at Alberto Mejia. Chance he is done for the day. Two innings in. Keeping that pitch count fresh. Randall Delgado, the eight year MLB veteran, warming up in the bullpen. Pitch, two hits. Randall Delgado, longtime big leaguer in that third base bullpen. And with Enrique Burgos, one of the pitching coaches, is Panama side. First pitch to Christian Bethencourt, down and in, a ball and no strikes. You see a lot of guys from the same era of Atlantic, Atlanta prospectum, if you will. Christian Bethencourt, Randall Delgado, Yadiel Santa Maria. Those guys were all signed by the man who is now their manager, Luis Ortiz, formerly a scout with the Atlanta organization. No pitch up and in, two balls and no strikes. He found a lot of talent in his home country. And Bethencourt, one of the most interesting guys. There was a time when the San Diego Padres tried to make him into a two-way player, put him on the mound. He was touching 97-98 immediately. Must be nice. Last year, you see splitting time between Oakland and Tampa Bay. Panama City product. 100 big league games last year. Down in the dirt. Santa Maria will hold it second. Christian Bethencourt broke into the major leagues with Atlanta back in 2013. And you see just how much the numbers have come along. Last year, his age 30 season, OPS plus right at major league average and that slugging percentage of big boost. after spending four years away from the major leagues from 2018 through 2021 no big league time and then last year 100 games we'll get a visit here to the pitcher's mound this will be Ming Chen Su who will pay the visit talk things over with two way and Beth Ford will take first on the intentional walk on for the second time today and interesting because it sets it up for Jose Ramos the most dynamic bat in this lineup arguably and you kind of wonder what that conversation is with the pitch limits at play is that something where a pitching coach comes out and says hey in this spot we got two gone you get this out and make it through the third if not we got to go to somebody else yeah that's where the two work at the moment I think it goes to that side I think it's just a little bit of a game plan give it a breather let that heart rate get down just a little bit you've got Jose Ramos we know how how tough of an out he is in this lineup just a couple words just to calm him down a little bit this will be his last hitter though First pitch swinging, Ramos. Foul of the third base side. No balls and a strike. That first that bat from Jose Ramos. Saw a lot of pitches. 
that plays into his advantage because you see that change up multiple times in that bat. You know that's going to be that whiff with two strikes. Found a lot of them off. Jose Ramos last year, 123 combined games at two stops in A-ball. Rancho Cucamonga and then High A Great Lakes, a combined OPS of 818. Then he went on to the Arizona Fall League in addition to playing in the World Baseball Classic qualifiers in his home country. Played for the Glendale Desert Dogs in the AFL. And he bounces this one to third. Short route to second for the final out of the inning. And Bethencourt is retired there. And that will send us to the bottom of the third. Chi Wei Hu getting out of the jam. And we're scoreless through two and a half in Taijung. Alberto Mejia getting the ball on the first day of the 2023 World Baseball Classic, able to get some really good work done through two innings. Got out of a couple of jams. Ryan did the things that he needed to do to keep this thing where it is, scoreless as we head into the third. Yeah, only got the two innings, but you see Ruben Tejada making a big play to bail him out in the second inning. But the first inning, low the bases. We showed, we showed it there, that big third out. We talked about this in the in the in the day game with the Netherlands. Pump the block, getting out of that uh, first inning with a double play, getting a chance to settle in. If this game stays close, it will be a big factor here against Chinese Taipei. New arm into the game is the right-handed Major League veteran Randall Delgado. And for Randall Delgado, eight-year Major League veteran. Put together a nice little run, made the transition to the bullpen. Does he have enough left in the tank? He's only 33 years old still. We had a chance to talk to him yesterday, Tyler, and you know, something stood out again. Just like a lot of these, these players on this Panamanian team, this is a chance for him to showcase what he has left. He holds his Chinese Taipei thank you his middle innings. First man in to see Delgado is the leadoff man, Sung Chin Chung. Look at the scattering point now. We watch this guy in the, in the major leagues, you see him on the center stage, and you look at the, the pitcher arsenal, fastball, slider, and so forth, change up. But things change as you age. Trust me, I know this. As you get to the later stages in your career, you start to lose a little bit of velocity. You start to, uh, you know, the pitch usage changes quite a bit. Back up the middle into center field, Sung Chin Chung. Coming through with a leadoff single back in the top spot in the order, and he puts himself aboard to start the third. But regardless of the stuff, where Randall Delgado is in his career, one thing that does shine through in moments like this when you're dealing with the noise and the home team trying his high pace, you're going to see that poise because he's got that experience. He's pitched the major league level in front of big crowds. Nothing's really going to rattle him. So that with Alberto Mejia able to make big pictures, big, excuse me, big pitches. Low the bases. Get out some change. Yeah, like you said, Ryan, we got a chance to talk to Randall yesterday. 33 years old. He has not been in the big leagues for a while now. 2017, his last appearance in the major leagues with the Arizona Diamondbacks. He's been dealing with shoulder issues a lot. Shoulder surgery. Shoulder stuff, very difficult to come back, really. Yeah, it really is. I mean, you obviously the elbow, you have that UCL surgery with Tommy John, which it's, if it's not cut and dry, you come right back. Look at the shoulders, dice, it's usually a 50-50 chance you come back, let alone have the same stuff you had before the surgery. So, always tough to come back, but like you said, he's 33 years old, 6'4", 220. Great chance for him to showcase what he, what he still has. Going to work against the Reign CBBL most valuable player and triple crown winner. Lee Lynn. Lynn reached on that infield single to short back in the first inning. And very mindful of Chung over at first. Here are those two Triple Crown winners on this roster. Look at what Ho Young Wong did in 2017 with the Lamigo Monkeys. 407 hitter, 31 homers, and 100 plus runs batted in. That is unbelievable. Yeah, that's some crazy numbers and some epic backflips too. One thing, <laughs> he goes viral when you see some of those big backflips. You may see one tonight or these next couple of days.
Lee Lynn has been with the Monkees organization his entire career in the CBBL, formerly known as the Lamigo Monkees, now the Rakuten Monkees. And last year, 335, 391, 517, his slash line, which oddly enough is really not even close to his best career numbers. He won the Triple Crown last year and the Most Valuable Player Award. That was over 109 games. In 2019, Lee Lin played 103 games and slashed 389, 438, 639 with 20 homers and 81 driven in for a 1077 OPS. The following year in 2020, CBBL, a lot of people don't remember, the CBBL was actually the first league in Asia to come back and play, if memory serves correctly, during the pandemic. And in 108 games that season, 358, 414, 613, career high 25 homers, 86 RBIs. He is an incredibly dangerous bat out of the two spot. And a really good pitch there, and he's able to lay off. The count goes full. Yeah, it's a slaughter on the black. Now look at it. Really good pitch. Good, lo good location. Able to see that lay off a 3 2 count. Lead off single for Sung Chun Chung. He's off for the pitch. The 3 2 is fouled away. Ryan, in this circumstance, Randall Delgado is working with a guy who he has known for a large portion of his baseball life, not only because they come from the same country, came up in the Atlanta organization at the same time. How much confidence do you have to walk into an atmosphere like this? Like you said, Randall Delgado has seen just about everything you're going to see on a baseball right. field. He's not going to be rattled here, but working with Christian Bethencourt behind the plate has to be tremendously reassuring to him. Yeah, it really does. And, and remember, when you, when you join your team, you know, we talked about this with the, the Netherlands uh, earlier today. We talked about this with Cuba. Runner off again, this bouncing ball fair to first, so Santa Maria will get the out there, but Chung able to advance. One gone and a man in scoring position. But it does take that time to get used to everyone. Obviously, you know, you, you know each other, you come from the same country, but you a very high chance you've never thrown, had the same battery mate like that. So this is a huge advantage in this situation. When you have someone you're comfortable with, they know you, they know your tendencies, they know what you're gonna be confident with. If, you, if you're missing that big secondary pitch, what's that plan B? All those little things play into it. So Lee Lin retired, that brings up Tzu Wei Lin, which it's just, you start in this Chinese Taipei lineup, there is no soft spot in this order. And Tzu Wei Lin, the right fielder out of the three spot, who walked back in the first inning. Now a chance to get his team onto the board to score this game at the bottom of the third. Here we see what Lin did in the Australian Baseball League with the Auckland Tuatara. This past Southern Hemisphere summer, we call that a winter league. Look at Delgado, how he starts to make adjustments as you age. You can see a ton of secondary pitches that change up, that slider pitch up backwards to get to two strikes. Big spot here for the left-handed hitting Lynn. Swing and a miss on 0-2. So Randall Delgado battles back from the leadoff single and getting behind in the count to Lee Lin and now two away. Good changeup. And nothing but so change up, change up, change up, back to back to back. The other thing that does as well, especially if you're gonna go extended innings here, so these pitch counts healthy, no one in the bullpen. Obviously, this is gonna be a multi inning stint. What happens is that hitter goes back to the dugout, delivers the message, hey, what did you see? Hey, I saw three straight change-ups. So that affects the, the next at-bat. Not only his second at-bat, you can see him talking right there to his teammate, but also to your teammates. You can put that in the back of their mind, knowing that you can command that secondary pitch, it makes it tougher. First pitch there for a strike to Yu Chang. Strikeout of the night for Chinese Taipei hitters. And Sid Wei Lin, retired by Delgado, who's ahead of the count. And his 0-1 is fouled back. No balls and two strikes now on Yu Tang. There's another top out. Obviously, the big leaguers with the Boston Red Sox. Saw him with them in February. 
And this is a situation too. This will be, if you're around with a guy that's smart enough, he's been around long enough, you slip behind in that count, you know what? You get that open base, you can pitch around him a little bit. But you get to a two strike and you start attacking. You go to that best secondary pitch. Like a slider down the way right here. 0 2 from Delgado. Or a fastball. There you go. Wasted that one up high. I don't mind that too far, that pitch, because obviously it's 88, uh, excuse me, 89 to 90, but that looks like 100. Obviously, when you see change up, change up, slider all day, in that on deck circle as well. We get back upstairs. One, two, waved at and missed. And Randall Delgado yields the leadoff single and then bounces back with a ground out and back to back strikeouts and sends this game scoreless to the fourth. We talked so much about Cuba and the Netherlands and the drama that first game, shaping up for one just as good or better here in the nightcap. Scoreless through three in Tai Jung. Welcome back to the 2023 World Baseball Classic here in Tai Jung with former big league pitcher and two-time World Baseball Classic veteran Ryan Roland Smith. I am Tyler Maughan, Tai Jung Intercontinental Baseball Stadium, the site for our coverage of Pool A as the leadoff man for Panama here in the top of the fourth is the nine-year big leaguer Ruben Tejada, who takes strike one. Tejada, some good work already out in the field today. It's hard to believe that we have not seen Ruben Tejada in a major league uniform really since 2017. He did play six games with the Mets in 2019. Bounces this one foul, third base side. Did not play in the majors in 2018. 2017, he was with the Baltimore Orioles. It was all the way back to 2015. You remember the Chase Utley slide at second base in the National League playoffs that broke his leg. Kind of set him on a different path in his career after that. Ruben Tejada still a guy with a lot left in the tank. He's just 33 years old out of Santiago in Panama. Pitches away to him there. It's one ball and two strikes. Chi Wei Hu on for his fourth inning of work. Approaching 60 pitches as number 56 is placed down the left field line. That is a fair ball, and that's going to curl into the corner. Extra bases for Ruben Tejada, who is into second with a leadoff double, the second in as many innings for Panama. And they're trying to stretch Chi Wei Hu into this fourth inning. So many breakables, so many changeups. He's trying a ton of them to the top of this lineup. And when you throw them, you overexpose them. You get a chance to see them really out the middle of the plate. Ruth Tejada did this damage. So the game's potential first run in scoring position at second now. And it brings up Erasmo Caballero. Caballero talks so much about Lee Lin and his MVP performance here in Taiwan. Rosmo Caballero is the reigning MVP in the Panamanian League and also a Triple Crown winner with Chiriki. Look at those numbers. 1456 OPS. Now, granted, the game totals, not quite as many played in Panama as here in Taiwan, but still very impressive. Yeah, anytime you see the four is that first number, it's impressive regardless how many games you've played. You also might wonder on the other side with Lee Lin, you see those home run numbers, and he's like, really he led the league with 14 home runs. CPBL has actually been very open about the fact that they have altered the baseballs to try to cut down a little bit on the offense here in Taiwan. So the number is still really impressive. The power number is coming back down to earth a little bit. But... Man, Erasmo Caballero, 21 years old, the only guy on this squad not signed to a professional contract with a major league organization at any point in his career. And you wonder how long that's going to be a designation for him. See Chi Wei Hu laboring right here in the fourth inning. Sometimes you, when, when you know the bullpen's getting loose, your pitching coach comes out in that third inning. You kind of have that mindset, you know what, this is it for me. If I can get through this third inning, all of a sudden you get asked to go back out for the fourth. Sometimes he mentally checked out, and it looks like that way 
just not able to get a pitch across. And the hero takes a strike. Let's not forget, too, it is March. So coming off that long off season, obviously the month of July, and you're stretched out usually. See that pitch count getting to 60. 65 is the limit. And it's important to note that crossing 50 and entering that four-day mandatory rest, that wipes out the remainder of the opening round for pitchers on this opening day as Caballero will take ball four. So we'll see what the thought process is from Yueping Lin over there. He's the one in the mask in the center of your shot. First base dugout. Delaying a little bit with a visit to the mound from Yu Chi Gao. Yeah, I mean, that bullpen has been going this double barrel since the third inning. So I don't know if they're trying to buy some time, but this is pretty fascinating. You've really got to know your pitcher in this situation. I mentioned the fact he is laboring not only physically but mentally right now. 61 pitches. They're going to try and squeeze another at bat out of Chi Wei Hu before they go to the bullpen. I'm kind of surprised though, Tom, I'm not going to lie here, that they're sticking with him. One thing we did explain in the early game today, you can cross that max pitch threshold if you are in the middle of a plate appearance. So in this circumstance, if Chi Wei Hu is going to work against Luis Castillo and hit 65 pitches, he can finish this at bat, and then he has to be removed from the game as his first pitch is down and away to Castillo, who singled back in the second inning. And this is a huge, huge opportunity for Panama, they have to weigh him out. He is not throwing strikes, laboring, absolutely on his last leg. Have to force him to throw strikes in this situation. First two on for Panama here in the top of the fourth. 1-0, right side, that'll scoot through for a base hit. Rounding third, here comes Tejada. The throw to the plate from Lynn is high, and Tejada slides in under it. It's an RBI knock for Luis Castillo, and a 1-0 lead for Panama on the top of the fourth. And look at that jolt of energy in that Panama dugout. You see Ruben Tejada greeting his teammates at the top step of the dugout. Now it looks like they're going to make a change. Just too little, too late. Chi Wei who just no finish on these pitches whatsoever. See Caballero just taking advantage of a flat fastball. Knew it was coming. Ruby Tejada getting that extra step. Scoring the first run of this inning. And the first run in 30 innings at the World Baseball Classic for Panama, which comes across on the RBI single for Luis Castillo. Erasmo Caballero going first to third. Castillo scooted into second, by the way, on the throw to the plate. And Ruben Tejada, the hustle to break this scoreless deadlock here in the fourth. And Chi Wei Hu is still out there at the moment. And now we will get that pitching change confirmed. A conversation between Yue Bing Lin and our home plate umpire today, Roberto Ortiz. And that will send us to a timeout. First run of the game across, 1-0. Pitching change for Chinese Taipei here in the top of the fourth. Panama out in front. The last time Panama scored a run in the World Baseball Classic, I was a college student. You were making the climb through the minor leagues with the Seattle Mariners, still a year away from your major league debut. 2006, a 30-inning wow. scoreless streak snapped a moment ago on the RBI single by Luis Castillo. And for Luis Ortiz and his guys, you can breathe a little easier now with a one-run lead. It's obviously not going to be enough, we would imagine, tonight. But that scoreless streak is behind you. Don't have to think about it anymore. Yeah, you can kind of get that. You know, it rattles around in the back of your mind, thinking of the fact that obviously you've taken so long to get back here. But at least just put up some runs, put up a, put up a fight, and they're in a good spot right now. We talked a lot about Uche Chen, the, uh, the pitcher for, excuse me, Chi Wei Hu, getting stretched to his limits, holding on just too long. Now all of a sudden they have to make a pitching change. And the new arm into the game is the reigning CPPL Rookie of the Year, Kwan Wei Chen. Wei Chuan Dragons right-hander on to inherit second and third with one gone. Put up his, some really good numbers. You mentioned that rookie year, 2021, a 1-8 ERA, 27 games. 2022, he's got that 313. You saw those numbers flash up. 
Yeah, tough spot right here, though. Misspoke. Second and third. Nobody out. You see the scattering port. Upper 80s. Get up there, 94. And you can see, too, just the looseness going on. Some of these swings, bigger swings. You don't have to press so much, trying to get that first run across. Knowing that you're going to be okay. Try and get, carry that momentum from the qualifiers if you're Panama. Try and shut this crowd, crowd down, knowing that you've got that big matchup that first game. And all of a sudden, you're up 1 0. Trying to sit in position. Erasmo Caballero at third base, Luis Castillo at second, and Jose Caballero awaiting as he takes that pitch away, and the count is 1 and 2. He didn't chase it. Jose Caballero, member of the Seattle Mariners organization. 33 games last year between rookie ball and double A in the end system, and then got time in the Arizona Fall League with the Peoria Javelinos. Two way who anxiously coming on from that first base dugout. One, two, Caballero down the line and left, and he yanked that one foul. We talked about how we heard from Luis Ortiz yesterday. If we could score runs early and try to at least quiet this crowd down, that would be massive for us. You get a hit right here, bring it two. Yeah. Wonder what the reaction is from this 20,000 strong crowd here tonight. Yeah, you gotta wonder what will it take to silence this crowd. I mean, look, not only obviously you know, they want the team to win, but they've been waiting 10 years to get the game back to Taiwan on this stage. Watching there, guys. They've been waiting a long time to spend nine innings out here. Taishan. Ball and two strikes. It remains. Wan Wei Chen last season led the CPBL in strikeouts for nine innings. Hits for nine innings and whip. A whip of 0 0.89 a year ago. Just going to that funky over the top, deceptive delivery. Good changeup. Wage one Dragons closer trying to shut down a rally here in the fourth. And that one way up and in, spinning Caballero out of the way. Two and two. This is an anxious moment for these fans in this ballpark. Their offense is putting three hits on the board, but hasn't been able to bring anybody around as of yet. Trailing this game by one, nobody out of the inning, and two in scoring position. The infield drawn in. And a step behind the bags all around. Two-two to Caballero. Left side, that's through for a base hit, past the dive of Chung. It's going to bring in the lead runner, Caballero. Castillo will hold it third, an RBI single for Jose Caballero, and a 2-0 lead for Panama in the fourth. And he just looked way too comfortable that entire at-bat. All of a sudden, this crowd has been silenced just at least for a split second. What an at-bat, though, two strikes. There's that split, left up, out over the plate. For a ton of them earlier on. Good swing. And they're in business, Panama. Game one right here for them. And I gotta be honest with you, we saw that shot a second ago, the Panama friends and family, we could hear them from up here cheering just now. I didn't even know they were here. That's how <laughs> deafening these fans have been. Chinese Taipei the whole night. And now Yadiel Santa Maria, who led off the third inning with a double in a big spot here, first and third, and nobody out. Yadiel Santa Maria is a guy that I have thought of many times over the years as sort of the epitome of how cold the game of baseball can be to you. 2010, early on in his professional career, traded from the New York Yankees to the Atlanta organization, spent nine games at the Class A advanced level. On April 19th, broke out of a real rough stretch Hit a home run, his fifth as a pro ball player. Two days later, released. Never to be seen again wow. 
in pro ball. And now here he is playing for his country in the World Baseball Classic as that one bounces into him. Santa Maria from played back home in Panama and was on the Panamanian Caribbean World Series team. The Caribbean Series this year, really fun event. He got to play in three games for Panama, went five for 11 with a double and a homer. And the 35 year old awaiting. Two balls and no strikes on it. Also felt like this is a player who very easily must be the favorite player of MLB Network's Matt Vaskersian. His last name is Matt Vaskersian's home run call. It's outstanding. Easy tie-in. Two-0 -oh pitch. Crushed. Out in the left center, this is gonna split the alleyway and it'll get all the way to the wall. Easily in from third, Luis Castillo. Jose Caballero scores two doubles out of the nine spot for Yadiel Santa Maria and Panama breaking this thing open in the fourth with a four nothing lead. Let me ask the question, what would it take to take this crowd out of this game? Santa Maria with a two out, uh, excuse me, two oh. Shot into the gap in left field. All of a sudden, the momentum has shifted into that dugout quickly. And all kinds of business here for that Panamanian team. Not only that, too, now turns the lineup back over. And still nobody out in the inning. And Santa Maria, I mean. Both of his balls to left have been crushed. And this ballpark with 20,000 people right now has gone silent. And a stunned Chiwe who in that first base dugout charged with the first three men across in this inning after dealing scoreless ball through his first three. And Ryan, we just keep going back to the thought process you had. Yeah. Very obviously, you got a guy who's laboring, and it was really surprising to see Chinese Taipei stick with Chi Wei Hu as long as they did to start this fourth. Well, that's how you get yourself in, in, in these situations. Obviously, you've seen some, some big bats come alive, some big hits in this inning, but you put yourself in that situation. You get that momentum into that Panamanian dugout. You get the energy. All of a sudden, the, the, the energy is coming, oozing out of that dugout right now because you've put yourself in that position. Alan Cordoba, 0 for 1, a walk in the first inning, strike out in the third. And man, look at how much tonight's starting pitcher for Panama, Alberto Mejia, is loving it. He's the one in the gray pullover in that third base dugout. Cordoba crushes this one to left, and it is right at Ho Young Wong. So a break there for Chinese Taipei as Cordoba put a charge into it, but he's out number one. Some good swings from this Panamanian team. Very relaxed. That man right there, the manager, Ye Ping Lin, his Chinese Taipei team, he will lose sleep over that decision early in this fourth inning. There's that split just staying up in the strike zone. Easy to hit when it's that high level pitch. That's a pitch you're trying to bury. He hasn't been able to do that this entire inning. For two starts tonight for Jonathan Arauz. And the first pitch down in the dirt to him, 1 0. <laughs> Anxious moments for Yue Bing Lin. A guy who you can see has had a lot of success in his young managerial career. Won a title for the Uni President Lions in his first season. All-time saves leader as a player in the CBBL. He pitched.
pitched for the organization he now manages from 2005 to 2017. 129 career saves. He also pitched in the World Baseball Classic. Tyler, you mentioned some of those saves, some of that experience out of the bullpen. You'd think that if you had a manager, manager that could manage a bullpen, it would be him. Or read his players, get that, have that gut feeling, knowing. <laughs> go back to Chiway, who the start of the game. Here's some more notable names from this Chinese Taipei coaching staff. Chi Kong Gao, the four-time Best Ten Award winner, one of the best players of his era. 19-time All-Star, Jin Min Peng, member of this staff as well. One of the hitting coaches listed. Chinese Taipei has two hitting coaches on its roster, as does Panama on the other side. One coach that wasn't on that graphic, Chen Ming Wong, the, the pitching coach. Tons of success as a New York Yankee. Back-to-back 19-win -back seasons. 2006, 2007. The guy who you and I were talking about the other day, there's a Netflix documentary about Chen Ming Wong. A lot of critical acclaim for pen coach on this Chinese Taipei squad. Is that pick? back in behind the oh. ad second. I was shocked you haven't seen it. I know. I thought that there was one guy who has seen that documentary. It's Tyler Mon. And actually a good wow. friend of mine who's in the house tonight, a uh, Taiwanese baseball journalist named Adam Wong. Adam helped work on that documentary. And it's been one of those things that's been sitting in my Netflix list for, you know what my problem is with Netflix? I just spend all my time adding things to my list. I'm never watching anything. Too busy watching Lava Island. <laughs> <laughs> fouled away. Chen into the count now, two and one. Alongside Ryan Roland Smith, my name is Tyler Mon, former two-time WBC participant. You've been in all kinds of WBC games. These moments, I mean, if you're in that Chinese Taipei dugout on that first base side, take me through what the energy is like right now, trailing Man. four nothing in front of your home crowd. It is tough. Look, you got four games. That's it. This is not like the regular season in the United States. We get 162 games. You know what? You lose that energy early in the game. You know what? We'll get you tomorrow because we got 162 of these bad boys to get through. When you're in tournament style games, you, you have this kind of vision in your head leading into it. What to expect, what you're going to go through, you kind of structure your pitching. All of a sudden, here you are at game one, you kind of second guess yourself some of your decisions. I guarantee you, uh, you Ye Ping Lin has been doing that this entire fourth inning. On the other side, too, if you're Panama, you know, you can take a breath. You talked about that scoreless streak they had. Now, all of a sudden, they're loose, they're getting some good swings off, they're seeing pitch as well. This is the ultimate way you want to start a four game pool play series. Ooh, big strikeout there as Chen freezes Arauz. And two gone now. That is a monster second out with a man out there in scoring position and the person to Yadiel Santa Maria. Finally get that split over. Freezing Arauz as that split. Middle of the plate. Been aggressive to Panama all of a sudden. Get frozen on that pitch. So you need that. You, listen, you, you just want to get a couple claps, a couple of the bangs of the drum in this crowd. You can get back in that dugout. Somehow manufacture some energy if you're Chinese Taipei. So two gone now, and Christian Bethencourt will try to add a run to this already four-run inning. And that is Panama's third base coach, Vicente Garibaldo, who came in and asked for the rosin bag to be moved back from the rubber. Looking after his guys. Lock it. Bethancourt already reaching twice tonight. Single back up the middle in the first and a walk in the third. And the veteran backstop awaits the first pitch. And that one is ball one. That split has been the difference for Quan Wei Chen. Big weapon for him. Of course, they're leading the league in strikeouts. But just not able to command that pitch. One 0 -oh. Big pass. 
one and one. Can't get a fastball up in the strike zone. Started salivating on this one. Look at this swing. These are the kind of swings that we talk about this year. You can get off. And all of a sudden, you got a nice little four run lead. Sell out on that fastball. Bethancourt, one of the guys that Luis Ortiz and his staff thrilled to be able to get. As Panama in the qualifier had to do work to qualify for this World Baseball Classic without their big league guys, without a lot of their minor league guys who are still taking part in late season and postseason activities, regular season as far as the big league guys go. So now you come in to the main tournament, you've got almost a full complement. Not everybody that Panama would have liked to have had. But Bethancourt, a big addition to this roster, trying to come through here on 1-2 with two gone. Pounded foul, that'll stay at 1-2. and two. And this inning has taken a while. We are nearing a half hour. And again, one thing that we noted early, no pitch clock in the World Baseball Classic here in 2023. Pitch timer, which obviously will be omnipresent in Major League Baseball in 2023. Not part of the WBC. Chinese Taipei trying desperately to get back into that first base dugout. One two pitch on the way from Chen. Got the board, fouls it away. Just protecting against that split. Fouling it away. Christian Bethel and Court hoping to get another fastball middle of the plate. Seven minutes now. This top half of the fourth inning, and for Panama, hey man, they didn't score a run for 30 straight innings in World Baseball Classic. You'll play this inning however yeah. long it takes. You can keep adding on to this lead. Here's the one two. Bethancourt to right, that's down for a base hit. Rounding third base comes Santa Maria. The throw to the plate is not going to be in time to get him as it deflects off of Gao's glove. And it is a 5 nothing lead for Panama here in the fourth. And Santa Maria appears to be hurt off of the slide. The Christian Bethancourt could see that split from a mile away. We talked about him hunting that fastball up in the strike zone. With two strikes protecting. But one way changes no answers at all here in the fourth inning. Good piece of hitting too. Two strikes. Just slapping that ball into right field. And Chinese Taipei is going to go to the bullpen yet again as the ninth man of the inning will come to the plate here in the top of the fourth in the person of Jose Ramos. It has been a nightmarish top of the fourth for this home crowd. And yeah, Santa Maria, very awkward slide, but hopefully he's okay. And we will step aside. Five home as the top of the fourth continues for Panama. A five spot so far for Panama here in the top of the fourth inning. But take a look at this awkward slide from Yadiel Santa Maria a moment ago. Got up hobbling and headed over to the dugout on the third base side. And Jose Ramos who steps in the batter's box right now and takes the first pitch for a strike. You kind of saw Jose Ramos motioning to Yadiel Santa Maria and putting his hands out, like, why don't you just go in head first there? Right. Santa Maria appears to be okay in that third base dugout as the runner's off from first. Swing and miss in a stolen base for the veteran catcher, Christian Bethencourt. So he's in scoring position now, and it's no balls and strikes quickly on Jose Ramos as the new arm into the game. Jun Chung Lee tries to mercifully bring an end to the top of the fourth for Chinese Taipei. There's a the tough spot right here, trying to put this fire out here early in the game, too. It's only the fourth inning. See the numbers right here, 315 ERA, 42 games, 2-2 two two record. CC Lee, a lot of 
Major League fans will remember from his three seasons with Cleveland, 2013 to 2015, spent the time in the big leagues. Broken bat roller, third base side. Kind of surprised to see him in this game too. He's one of the big arms, one of the big weapons coming out of the bullpen. Chinese Taipei, it is 5-0. I'm not saying you have to just salvage it. You know, give up on this game, obviously it's only the fourth inning, but remember the pitch limitations, you have to be conservative with your, with your pitches, with your big arms. Chinese Taipei have got some big matchups coming up. It's very interesting seeing him in a game like this. Ramos didn't break the bat, just got that one off the end of the bat. No ball, two strikes down. Diaz gets him swinging. So good morning, good afternoon, good night. Jose Ramos is dispatched, but not before Panama sends all nine to the plate and brings home five. Headed to the bottom of the fourth, the five nothing lead for the visitor. Starting to try to dig out of this hole as we head into the bottom half of the fourth inning. A 5 0 lead for Panama. But Randall Delgado goes back to the mound, Ryan. He sat 33 minutes right. in the dugout after working the bottom half of the third inning. Yeah, it's always tough. First of all, you love to see you guys putting up some runs. That is for sure. But to try and be sharp. When you come back out, I have to sit down for 33 minutes. I guarantee you when you're going to the bullpen, trying a little bit, but the out facing hitters, the tough assignment. Biggest thing for him, yeah, he's teeing back in the dugout as fast as he can. But the Chinese Taipei, just trying to get something going, some kind of momentum back, some sort of energy back in that dugout. You mentioned 2013, the two wins. I was in that pool right here. Australia was one of those victories for Chinese Taipei. Chen Min Wang, pitching coach. Yen Ting Wu, the leadoff man, ripping that ball to the right side. And now Po Young Long into the batter's box. A chance to start getting an, in an inning up on legs. And, you know, if you're Chinese Taipei and Ripping Lin, the manager, a response here, even if you only get one back, right? A response here to get the crowd back in here, yeah, massive. For sure, just chip away. Obviously, it's still early, fourth inning. Yeah, you're right, though. Just get that one, get that one run, get on the board. Get some of that energy, some of that life back to the You see a fighter's fan, the Kaido Nippon Am fighter is the Nippon professional baseball team of wow. Long. As this one down the left field line, and what a play running into foul territory by Jose Caballero. Nolan Arenado esque in foul ground down the left field line. One gone on the foul out. That is a top play, a lot of ground to cover. Look at this. Back over his right shoulder. Kind of a basket catch. And you got to deal with the top right there as well, knowing. That's going to be coming up. Hopefully get some communication from Ruben Tahati. He shorts up. Look at this. Staying with that ball. Huge out. Able to brace himself against that fence. These teams have gotten a little bit of time in this ballpark, but there is virtually no familiarity. Rosa Caballero with foul territory in this park. Yeah, he's got to weave his way around the tarp. He's got to brace himself before he crashes into that fence. Make the boss can catch. Wings swelling around. Oh, actually, the wind is kind of going. I was expecting the same kind of wind. Remember, we saw the flags earlier in the day, knocking those balls down the field. Some of those balls looked like they were crushed in the early game. Cuban Netherlands certainly sounded like they were crushed. Oh, yeah. And we have yet to see a ball in this ballpark. We talked in our opening game today. Murray Cook, Major League Baseball. Wizard Murray told us that the ball will not travel very well to left center. Here's a line drive single back up the middle for Kanye Jung. 
puts him aboard and two hits the first three men of the plate here in the fourth for Chinese Taipei. First and second, one out for Yuji Gao, the catcher. <laughs> died down a little bit this crowd is getting fired back up though Tyler he's starting to get some pitches to hit middle of the strike zone Randall Delgado trying to get back in a rhythm same rhythm he had in that third inning he's taking back in the dugout Yuji Gao was the one who bounced into that weird 1-6-3 double play on the tapper in front of the plate that Christian Bethencourt alertly pounced on and flung to second after the leadoff single by Kunyu Jung in the second inning. This crowd starting to get back into it. I shut it down. I shouldn't have. Look at the back. He's a regret. I should have jumped up on the dugout and done the dance. The crowd would have loved it. But no, I shut it down. I just got, I was too embarrassed. I was too self conscious. I couldn't, I couldn't knock it out. You know, Ryan, we only get so many turns on this big blue marble. That's right. You passed up that opportunity. I did. One of the things I'm most disappointed in with you. Yeah, it was, uh, it was an awkward moment, too, because they kind of try and play out. And, yeah, give you the space to, to do the dance, and I just I shut it down. Way up high, out of the right arm of Delgado. Two balls and two strikes. What would you have done? I would have, I would have rocked it. Yeah, right. I think the thing that disappoints me most that you didn't do it is that means that there's no video out there of you doing it. Well, yeah, that I would pay so much money to see. Yeah, I guess that plays to my favor right now. Is we're sitting here. <laughs> we have some, some wizards in the truck who could definitely pull that, pull that video up. Randall Delgado again. Trying a lot of fastballs in this inning. Trying to make quick work, but he has some hard contact. And he's going back to those secondary pitches. This is a weapon for him. Look at that changeup. Big weapon for him in his major league career and on this stage as well. Randall Delgado is so savvy, and early on in his career, he was a mid to upper 90s kind of guy. And especially after a shoulder injury, aging at this stage of his career, probably not gonna recover that velocity. But changing speeds, regardless if you're throwing 98 and shifting to 88, or 91 and shifting to 81, can be just as effective no matter what. And Randall Delgado is the type of guy who really knows how to manipulate and maneuver that. To head the count on one of the nine hole hitter, Jason Chun. Delgado crossing the 30 pitch threshold, so a mandatory day of rest tomorrow for Randall. And this is where you're going to have some strategy involved with how you have you work. You guys see the bullpen getting loose. For Panama. This one out on the left, and oh, what a diving catch from Alan Cordova to close things out in the bottom of the fourth. Cordova on a sinking line drive off the bat of Chun, read it perfectly, and he makes the grab to end a Chinese Taipei threat in the fourth. Five across for Panama in the top half of the inning. We're headed to the fifth, a 5 nothing lead for the visitors. Some fantastic defense from Panama in the bottom half of the fourth inning, keeping this game a 5-0 lead. And, Ryan, this was the play from Alan Cordoba that ended things. Yeah, this is a huge play. You've been talking about that ball that's fading to that left field line, but one thing to keep in mind, too, that's that low line drive. It's easy to lose that ball in the seats. You have the fans right behind that first base dugout. They've got the, the drums and the, the horns, everything. 
So you see plenty of white behind that uh, first base dugout. So you can lose that ball for a split second. You can see him kind of have to change his route just there for a little bit. Hey, not to mention, too, let's not forget, this guy's kind of banged up. He took one off the index finger. He took one off the foot. So nice play. And Randall Delgado getting, uh, having a chance to keep that pitch count nice and healthy. Alan Cordoba, a converted shortstop where he started his pro career. And don't forget that three batters prior to that, it was Jose Caballero making that fantastic catch down the left field line in foul territory for out number one in the inning. Those guys on the first base drops. side, they would desperately like to have this Chinese Taipei offense come alive to have something to get loud about. Ruben Zahada led off the top of the fourth inning with a double. In Chinese Taipei's first five men to the plate last inning, all reached and all scored as we take a look at that play down the left field line by Jose Caballero last inning for the first out at the bottom of the fourth. Such athleticism. Making that play long run. Walk on, going to see the fist pump right there too from Cordoba, but just staying with that, that ball. And also too, you've got the top involved. Noise. Second time in as many innings, Ruben Zahada is aboard to lead off for Panama. I said this back in the fourth inning. CC Lee out there pitching. He's one of those big arms. You essentially want to save for a big moment, especially if you get a lead. I know you, you try and play this like there's no tomorrow. I get that. But you've only got four games. You have the pitch restrictions. And he's only got nine pitches as well. But he is one of those big arms in that bullpen. You see the scattering for it. the time, Tyler, in, in, in the major leagues, that good fastball, sneaky, 92, 94. High leverage reliever. That's the role he's playing with his Chinese Taipei team. But he is pitching right now in a 5 nothing uh, deficit. Yeah, this is just a circumstance in which you would imagine you had been Glenn is thinking, I'm going to do everything possible to keep this damage at only 5 nothing. I guess you play into the fact that you do still have to play Cuba. You still have to play the Netherlands. You get a chance to watch both those teams. They're going to be tough matchups. But like I said, you kind of want to save some of your horses in that bullpen. One thing to keep in mind about these World Baseball Classic pools in this opening round, the last place finishers from each of these four pools will be relegated to the qualifiers coming up in 2025. We know the next World Baseball Classic will be in 2026. Top four teams getting that automatic bid to the next Classic, so 16 teams moving on to 2026. But the last place team will be sent to the qualifying rounds in 2025. And Ryan, we obviously love doing the qualifiers and love how much fun baseball we saw as a bouncing ball out to second could be two. Four, six, three. Two gone, lead off base runner a race. It's a big out right there. But you mentioned the qualifiers too. The time of year and some of the pressure puts on you as a nation to get back to the World Baseball Classic. I mean, you look at Panama, for example. They've had to go qualify a couple times. And the time of year is never suited because you've lost a lot of your players from regular season, whether they're playing in Japan, they're playing Major League Baseball, Minor League Baseball. You can't just pick up and leave and go try and qualify in the month of September. If you're Yue Ping Lin right now, best case scenario is you can get the final out of this inning from CC Lee and save him to keep him available tomorrow. He's still well under that 25 pitch threshold that would necessitate a day of rest, or 30 rather, but you can get to that final out here, shut him down for the night. Bring him back tomorrow if you need him, as Chinese Taipei will go to work. Actually coming up on Friday against Italy. That would be a big thing for this pitching staff to have one of its most effective arms available for each of these games as that foul ball right back behind the plate. And for the 
training staff for Chinese Taipei headed out from that first base dugout and CeCe Lee kind of waves him away, but time already called for that visit. So we'll just make sure that everything's okay <laughs> with CeCe Lee. Yeah, you see the trainer come out and they're trying to make sure he's okay. They may have seen something from the dugout, but when you're pitching this situation, I've been there before, he's waving them off and just saying, listen, I'm good. I've got a nice little rhythm going right now. I don't want you to break that by coming to check on me. I've got two outs, but back in the count, let me finish this inning. I appreciate the support, but just let me, I, I got it. Two balls and a strike. Being accurate hits there for Luis Castillo. Castillo with the RBI single to drive in Ruben Tejada last inning, the first run scored for Panama since 2006 in the World Baseball Classic. 30 scoreless innings, and he swings and can't get a piece here, and he's gone on strikes. And for the first time tonight, Panama sends the minimum. We're headed to the bottom of the fifth inning in a 5-0 Panama lead. In 2006 and 2009, Panama took part in the World Baseball Classic, but in 2013 and 2017, they were absent from the main tournament because it had not come through the qualifying rounds to make it to the main competition. And it just goes to prove the point that if you are relegated from this opening round to those qualifiers, there's no guarantee you make it back. Panama is a talent-rich, baseball history-rich country that's been waiting 14 years to return to this stage because they fell short in the last moments of the qualifiers. That's why every game is so important in this opening round. This ball is charged in the air to right field. Giving it chase is Castillo, and oh, he collides with Ramos, and he hangs on out in right center, I believe, racing all the way around Sung Jae Jung, and fans going crazy here, but that's an out. He's got hell under the ball. Fans just can't see it yet, they're not showing it on the scoreboard. Holy cow, Luis Castillo. Full out effort with Ramos in pursuit. And I mean, if you're a Los Angeles Dodgers front office member, your heart is in your throat right now. Ramos popped up quickly. Castillo, you hope, just had the wind knocked out of him, but a violent collision in right center, and it results in a dramatic out number one here in the bottom of five. And usually a play like this, your center fielder has priority, but this was caught right in the middle. And let's not forget, yes, it's been loud all game long, but the noise, the volume went through the roof. You can't hear anything. It's all of a sudden colliding out there in right center field. Looks like everyone's okay, but to hold on to that ball, you can hear the crowd not quite figuring out the fact that that ball's still in his glove when you hit the deck. Have a look at it right here. This ball was crushed too. In that gap, takes a glance at Ramos, can't hear each other, and wraps up in that left arm of Ramos. Hey man, how about the presence of mind? Jose Ramos, watch him. His immediate reaction is, all right, where's the ball? And it's still right. in the glove of Luis Castillo, who's able to hang on and is holding it up like a trophy. And Ramos, <laughs> finally, in that last second, looks and sees it. Holy cow. But what it, a play by Luis Castillo. It is loud in here. You will not be able to hear anyone calling for calling for the ball. You see, Fernando Delgado knows right away. Wow. And thankfully, everybody's okay. And Luis Castillo getting an ovation out there in right field from Chinese Taipei fans obviously disappointed that that didn't turn into an inside the park homer for their team, but representing the respect for a good play, we'll get another look at it. Tyler, you make a great point. The fact that Jose Ramos, his first thought, obviously you care about your team, man, let's not forget, but the first thought for him is where is the ball, where is the ball, because usually 90% of the time that ball's bouncing out of that glove easily. And he's straight away, he's like, oh, he's caught it, we're good, we're good. <laughs> Wow. 
What a grab by Luis Castillo. And Herzberg's breaking ball there for a strike to the two spot hitter, Lee Lynn. Off the dirt off, off the hat. Get the wind back in your lungs, you're all good. Hey, the other thing too, you mentioned the LA Dodgers front office watching this game right now, holding their breath. This is the number eight prospect. That man right there, Jose Ramos. Real good. Wrapped him up too, kind of caught him. Caught his ball. Ground ball to third. Knocked out on the backhand by Jose Caballero. He's not going to have a play. And a one out single on the infield for Lee Land, his second hit of the night. That brings up Sudway Land, the right fielder. Right in our scorebooks, obviously. Everybody's kind of got their own styles. I put stars by defensive plays that are highlights and the last three balls put in play prior to that ground out all have stars by them the foul out down the left field line from Po Young Wong the line out of the diving catch by Alan Cordoba in left so to jump flying out to the collision in right and if Jose Caballero was able to make that play just now that probably would have been a star to play as well as the back pick in at first behind Lynn this is full speed. Yeah, this is full speed, full volume as well. Castillo's got the beat on it, Jose Ramos. That's like one of those right in the middle, in between. Can't hear your teammate at all. He's holding the glove up. <laughs> Look, we got it. It's like he wanted to let the crowd know as well. That's Chris Siegel, the crew chief and our second base umpire out of Major League Baseball, who went out to confirm the out. And yeah, in that spot, you're probably trying to let the crowd know, like, no, yeah. all right, calm down. Good up your enthusiasm. And Chung Chun Chung flying around the bases with no idea where that ball was. Yeah, he's just going to keep going. Pick up your third base coach. All right, we're going to keep going. Crowd's going crazy. Swinging a bouncing ball back to the mound, and Delgado's got it over to first. Two gone as... Subway Lin will push Lee Lin to second. And that'll bring up Yu Tang with the potential first run of the night in scoring position for Chinese Taipei out of second base. Chang being quiet tonight. Struck out, he's lost that bat. Randy Delgado, that change up. Before we leave here, I'm going to want you to learn one of these dances <laughs> to make up for not doing the player of the game dance. Now, I will ask you this. Redeem myself, you talking about? Yeah, yeah, exactly. For these you, fans. You did say that your best performance in the CBBL came when you were really not feeling well. Yeah. Was it that game? No, it was not. Oh, see, now you have no excuse. Right. <laughs> there is no way. I mean, I was one of the sickest times I've ever, sickest I've ever been. I remember I threw, I think, six or seven innings or something. I was struggling. <laughs> so I battled through it. Didn't have to do the dance that night. So I, didn't get, I didn't get the MVP that night. <laughs> there was times, I'm not going to lie, like you, you know, you're pitching a good game, you're just hoping you don't win the award. <laughs> one, one. Back up the middle, that's in the center field, and Chinese Taipei is on to the board at the bottom of the fifth on an RBI single by who else? Yu Chang. This crowd has woken up their guy, Yu Chang, announced he was not going to play in the World Baseball Classic for Chinese Taipei. The crowd got stuck into him all over social media. He changed his decisions days later, and here he is, waking up this crowd with the first run from Chinese Taipei, Pool A. He just smoked that thing right back through the box. And that will spell the end of the night for Randall Delgado, a really stellar effort out of the bullpen for the longtime big leaguer. Two scoreless innings for Delgado coming into this frame. Got to two outs and a man at second before Yu Chang came through. And Panama is headed to the bullpen. Visitors with the lead, but Chinese Taipei with a run across here in the bottom of the fifth.
Panama with a 5-1 to one lead as we move along here in the bottom of the fifth. The offense may be the story. The defense may be just as big of a story. Spectacular work out in the field over the last two innings for Panama. And no play bigger than that one right there. Luis Castillo, a full-speed collision with Jose Ramos. The right fielder Castillo able to hold on to that ball in the alleyway to rob Sung Chin Chung of what would have been an inside the park. Homer had that ball gotten away with the way Chung flies out of the leadoff spot. And Panama headed to the bullpen as Randall Delgado yields an RBI single to Yu Chang here in the bottom of the fifth. And the new arm into the game is the right-hander Severino Gonzalez. Severino Gonzalez. Pitching in Mexico, 6 ERA, limited time. Got two outs in this inning. Trying to get his team back in the dugout. But you know some of those, those defensive plays in really the most crucial time of this game. He talked about some of the momentum swings, how quickly things change. Another ball hit up the middle. All of a sudden, you talk about momentum. Chinese Taipei coming right back into that dugout. And Ting Wu is aboard. Third hit of the inning now for Chinese Taipei. His third time aboard tonight out of a five spot. Walked in the first, single the lead off the fourth. Singles again here in the fifth. And all of a sudden, the tying run moves into the on-deck circle for Chinese Taipei here in the bottom of the fifth inning. That's still so early, only the fifth inning. Chip away, use that crowd's energy. The guy who can beat you in one swing of the back. He goes after the first pitch and skies it in the air to right. Castillo, who started this inning with that spectacular grab in the gap, is there to make the catch to close the fifth. Chinese Taipei is onto the board, but Panama avoids further damage and carries a 5 1 lead to the sixth in Taijun. Ryan Roland Smith serenading us with the sounds of one direction in the ballpark as we move into the top of the sixth inning. New arm into the game for Chinese Taipei is the right-hander Kai Wei Tang, who will take over on the pitcher's mound. You see his numbers in the San Francisco Giants organization last year for the Richmond Flying Squirrels. And onto the mound and a shutdown inning, very important here for Chinese Taipei after they were able to get on the board in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, for Kai Wei Tang, you mentioned the fact he is pitching in the United States with the Giants, but you're starting to get a little bit of momentum back in that dugout. A little bit of a heartbeat. You want to try and get a quick inning. They've been hard to come by. They're going to continue right here as well. Not the way you want to start it is. Jose Caballero is aboard on a first pitch hit by pitch. Here to start the top of the sixth. Highway Tang. Young pitcher, 24 years old, 6'4, 260. Chance to pitch for his national team. Big stage. Let's have a quick in. One thing with Highway Tang, excuse me. Pay, pay attention to that command, too. That's one thing that can get away from him. Runner off of the first pitch and an easy stolen base for Caballero. So trying to make the hit by pitch hurt for the right-hander, not for the guy who got plunked. And the stolen base puts Caballero in scoring position two pitches into this inning. Yeah, getting a good jump. With that good scattering point, no one. Highway Tang, probably slow to the plate. Highway, formerly a member of the Minnesota Twins organization. He made his professional debut with the Twins back in 2018. Look at that lead. The lead in the jump for Caballero at first. No chance. Oh, he also really steps in. The guy who's already doubled twice. Driven in two runs and scored a run out of the nine spot in the order tonight. Veteran first baseman. one -oh on the way to him. Two balls and no strikes. Real good velocity there from Tang, 95. The biggest thing is the, is the command. And look, we talked to 
Chinese Taipei's manager yesterday talking about how this is how excited he is. This is a young team, a lot of young pitching. But again, sometimes the nerves can uh, can overwhelm you a little bit. First thing to go when that happens is that command. This is also a spot that Kai Tang is not super familiar with. 73 appearances as a pro ball pitcher, 71 have been starts. And he has not made a relief appearance since 2019. And he was in the Midwest League in the Twins organization, and a great pick on the backhand there. Rio on the way. And that is ball four. So a first pitch hit by pitch, followed by a four pitch walk. Nothing in the zone so far from Kai Wei Tang. And already a visit to the mound with double barrel action going in the Chinese Taipei walk. bullpen. Probably a short leash. Leash is going to get shorter and shorter. Or just a mound visit. Again, 24 years old, first World Baseball Classic. He's got professional experience, but no stage bigger than this. You can see why the Giants like him, that frame, the velocity. There's obviously a lot of projectability, but the command has been an issue. Last year, Skyway Tang with Double A Richmond, 169 strikeouts and 136 in the third innings, but also 85 walks. Yeah. See Hu Chang over there. First base, just giving him a little pep talk, trying to calm him down. Yeah, well, no, happening right now for Thomas' oh, first appearance. Oh, national team. So it sends us back to the top of the order, and Alan Cordoba, over two with a walk. Painful at bat in the third, in which he did what he did just there. Squared to bunt, took a pitch off of his right hand, then fouled a pitch off of his left foot. Yeah. Kind of spoiled the surprise there with Tang turning around to look at second and Cordoba squaring. And that's why you do pretend to pick down the second base to see if the hitter is going to square around the bunt. I give it away. I will say this, though. I mean, yes, you want to bunt two runners over in the scoring position again. You don't see a whole lot of that in Major League Baseball these days. Bunting's that lost art. But a guy like Highway Tang, it's obvious he's having command issues. Has to be a strike in this situation. Otherwise, you have to let him come to you in, in this situation. Do not give him any free outs. The young kid struggling to throw strikes. At second base, Jose Caballero. Cadiel Santa Maria at first. And right now, I mean, six pitches, all of them out of the zone for Kai Wei Tang. Turning around, going to second base. There is not much of a rhythm here. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, though. Look, I've been here before where you just don't have that feel. Like, you're trying to get into some kind of rhythm mechanically, obviously mentally trying to get stable. Anytime a guy turns around and shows bunt, you're just like, you know what, I'm just going to throw this down the middle and just try and get a cheap out. Cordoba back to the mound. Tang will go to first, and it pulls the covering second baseman, Chung, off the bag, and everybody is safe. Wow, Tang is all kinds of rattled right now in this situation. You know what I think might have thrown him off there? Yu Chang had to duck out of the way of that throw at the last second, and that's going to bring an end to a very short night for Kai Wei Tang in a restless Chinese Taipei fan base. On an error charge to Tang, now facing bases loaded and nobody out.
here in the top of the six as Panama threatens again. Chinese Taipei going to the bullpen again. Back in a moment for Taicho. A nightmarish start to the top of the sixth inning and continues to go that way for Kai Wei Tang, who it looked like had gotten the first out of the inning on a sacrifice bunt by Alan Cordoba, but instead an errant throw, pulling his second baseman, took Zhe Chen off of the first base bag where he covered. And here is Yu Chang ducking to try to get out of the way of that throw. Yeah, a couple things here with, first of all, Kai Wei Tang, obviously the Heart rate's up a lot. First time getting a chance to pitch for his, his country, so he's nervous, not throwing strikes. Didn't set his feet, but you mentioned it too, the fact that Yu Chang's ducking in that situation. You have that last little second guess as to who you're throwing to, and then you kind of just try to throw a dart over there to first base, pull your second baseman off the bag. Tell you what, moments like that, when you come in, can't throw strikes, can't get now. When you throw a ball away, you'll lose sleep over that. And the first pitch is back to the backstop, and the throw to the plate is not going to be in time to get Jose Caballero. And on the wild pitch, Panama has gotten the run back. It's a 6-1 game. Chen Wei Zun, the new arm into the game for Chinese Taipei. First pitch uncorked. And back to a five-run margin. Yeah, this gets behind. The hitter right here in the center <laughs> bounces back and actually gave him a shot at the runner. Tell you what, Panama, we saw that, that energy they had down in Panama during that qualifier. They started to look a lot like that. They were running the bases, stealing bags. We saw, that sol we saw, we saw the stolen base early in this inning. Starting to run all over Chinese Taipei. Wild pitch charge there to Zung. Oh. Jonathan Arauz. 0 for 3 tonight. We're batting with two men in scoring position and nobody out. And just one of nine pitches thrown in this inning in the strike zone by Chinese Taipei arms. As this one is yanked foul down the right field line. that bullpen Chinese Taipei this plays too into the way you run things the next couple days how you manage that bullpen I'm not putting a dent it's a double barrel again Arrows a ground out to shortstop in the first inning fly out to left field in the third and a strikeout in the fourth 30 players on these rosters, 14 pitchers and two catchers the minimum. We might see all 14 by the end of the night tonight for Chinese Taipei at this rate. As 95 comes in tight on our own. Strikes now. So trying to get the first out of this top half of the sixth inning. These have just been long innings for Chinese Taipei on the mound. Five across for Panama on the fourth. One home here in the sixth. Two in scoring position. All right, who's awaiting? stay alive again on 3-2. Chinese Taipei six years ago really struggled with a pitching staff especially that did not have a ton of experience and this year a lot of guys with experience abroad. You look at how many pitchers have pitched in the major leagues, in the minor leagues, in Nippon professional baseball and for NPB farm clubs as well and you know, this is really supposed to be a strength for this Chinese Taipei team, and that has been a question mark now tonight. Yeah, the strength is supposed to be the command as well. You're not gonna see flamethrowers. 
Zong, you see on the mound right now, he can get it up there, and his command is usually strong, so this is another base hit. All right, Uz, back up the middle. That's going to bring in two more as Santa Maria and Cordoba score, and Panama busting this thing open, and now we're starting to get close to the point where you talk about the early termination rule coming into play. Ten-run lead after seven complete innings would force the early termination of a game. And I mean, we're still a little ways away from that, but this is a seven run lead for Panama here in the sixth as Arauz comes through with his first hit to drive in a pair. And still no one out. So a chance to get a couple more this inning. Man, oh man, this is certainly not the way that these Chinese Taipei fans Thought this one was going to go tonight as Christian Bethencourt steps in. He said earlier today that it would be a big surprise if we saw an early termination game in Pool A, and yet we are flirting with getting to that point a seven run lead for Panama. And man, for this Panama team, how cathartic! This performance has to feel you didn't score a run for 30 straight innings in the World Baseball Classic. Have not scored a run in nearly a generation right. in this competition. 17 years since Panama last scored a run in the WBC, and now you got eight tonight against the host team. But more importantly, too, it just your confidence goes through the roof. You've got some big matchups. You've got the Netherlands tomorrow. You watch them play early today against Cuba. You have a performance like this day one, take the crowd right out of it. You can roll that momentum into the next day. And on the flip side for Chinese Taipei, man, it just takes the wind out of your sails. Well, here's what's coming up. The remainder of Pool A, four more days of action from here in Taichung. We'll cook things off tomorrow at noon local time. And that, of course, is 11 p.m. Eastern time in the United States. Panama and the Netherlands, which as it looks right now, will be a matchup of 1-0 teams. And then Mike Piazza and Italy, his squad getting into the tournament with the night game tomorrow against Cuba, which fell today in a 4-2 decision to the Netherlands. Good one tomorrow night. We found out Matt, Matt Harvey's making his return to the big stage. It's going to be fun to watch. We'll get the nod tomorrow night for Italy in the tournament opener for the Azuri as the pitch foul back by Richard Bethencourt. Vinny Pasquantino and his guys will be under the lights here at Taichung Intercontinental Baseball Stadium. Chinese Taipei will play the night game here on home soil Friday and Saturday, and then they'll have the day game on Sunday. And now granted, it is a very different format as Bethencourt takes the walk here. But if you're a Chinese Taipei fan and you're looking for some hope, if you lose big on day one, a Czech Republic squad in the Regensburg qualifier got decimated. I think 21 to 3 was the final and a loss to Spain on day one. Rally came back, forced their way into the final day. Knocked off Spain in the rematch. Qualified to play in Tokyo and Pool B. So it's not an easy road from here if you drop game one, but it is still a possibility. Remember, the top two teams from here in Pool A will move on to the quarterfinals in Tokyo coming up next week. Swing from Jose Ramos trying to replicate his Panama qualifier success with a big hack, and he's down 0 1. Trying to get to that mercy roll all of a sudden. And that would be a real surprise here on day number one, but Panama putting together one heck of a good night. This Panama offense tonight, eight runs on nine hits. The first five games that Panama played in total in the Classic, all losses, seven total runs. Eight already tonight. 
through five plus innings at the plate. Yeah, they've been ready for this moment since we watched them back at those qualifiers. Especially that man right there. Man, Luis Ortiz talked about, you know, we need to not just come here and play and have a good time. We got to come here and win. Those are the things that we need to do to get people back behind this national team in Panama. Get kids excited again. Get Panamanian baseball fans back the way you want them to be behind this national team. And if tonight is any indication, this team is going to be a force this week here in Taichung. One, two, Ramos will stay alive. I mean, if you lose like this too, having that day off tomorrow to try these Taipei, just kind of press the reset button. You have to roll right back into another game. Obviously for the pitching as well. They have used some of the back end guys that usually you would save when you got that lead. They get that day off tomorrow. Re regroup and then come back the next day. One, two. Two balls and two strikes. Yeah, Jose Ramos, we're watching these at bats. He just doesn't chase a whole lot. Pitch in the middle of the plate, puts good swings on him. Fouls it back at least, but he will not chase tough pitches. Dui Ping Lin, the manager in the first base dugout for Chinese Taipei. Two two pitcher Ramos, three balls and two strikes. Really good at bat here from Jose Ramos, the young Dodgers prospect. You get that feeling right now. He's going to be sitting fastball, middle of the plate. He's going to come swinging out of his shoes at this ball. He's over. He's inside the strikes and over the plate. Two on the way, and that is ball four. I don't know if that got Ramos or if that just was off the glove of Gao, but either way, it puts Ramos aboard and it loads the bases with nobody out for the big league veteran Ruben Tejada. That's the situation we talked about having some of that moment, but also to the confidence level for your pitching. You have to make a move right here with quick. There's been some moves or some. Lack of from Lynn, the manager of the Chinese Taipei team, with his pitching staff. You get a young pitcher, Junior Zhang, who is starting to take him out of this game. Eight to one. They reach group two days from now. At a 33 minute top of the fourth inning, we're at 22 minutes here in the top of the sixth. Ruben Tejada at bat in a big spot. First pitch to him down for ball one. I mean, it does add some urgency to these at bats for Panama. Obviously, you're really comfortable with the lead, but you think to yourselves now, if you can add three runs and close out the next two Chinese Taipei innings and you wrap this thing up early, that saves you two innings of work for your pitching staff. Get you back to the hotel, gets you off your feet a little earlier tonight. So there is an extra element here. It's the Hata, cracks one foul, one and one. About the day for Ruben Tejada so far. Yeah, I talked about him showing off, showing that he can still be a major league caliber player. Good on the defensive side, but what about the offensive side too? Big double down the line. And scoring this run as well. Big chance right here, low the bases, none out. One one coming to him. One and two. For Ruben Tejada as well, it's great to see him on this stage playing for this team. For so many people, you hear the name Ruben Tejada, you think about the injury he suffered, the broken bone in his leg and the slide during the National League postseason with Chase Utley 
the take outside on a would-be double play. I think that's what most people think of when they take a Ruben Tejada. Ruben Tejada's a guy who, like you said, I mean, is still showing he could be an effective player at a high level. He's only 33 years old. It's really good to see for him. One, two. Tejada down the right field line. This is going to be trouble, and it's out over the head of Chang. It'll bring in at least one, as everybody else will hold. Arauz scores. Bethancourt to third, Ramos to second, another run home in the inning, and it is a 9-1 Panama lead in the sixth. Man, when it rains, it pours right now. Everything finding outfield grass. Ruben Tejada just trying to fight this pitch off. In on the hands. All of a sudden, we might have our first mercy rule. This is a stunner. Chinese Taipei, we really felt like, oh, that's the team everybody's sleeping on. This Chinese Taipei team is stacked with talent, and it really felt like it was the team that everybody had somewhat overlooked. And tonight, this has been a nightmarish scenario for Yuan Ping Lin, who is going to the bullpen once more. I believe. Yeah, because there is now a reliever coming in. We've got covered bullpens here in Taichung, but a new arm into the game for Chinese Taipei. We'll tell you about it when we return. Quite a contrast from the early innings of this game to where we sit right now. And if you are just tuning in, in the middle innings of game number two of the 2023 World Baseball Classic, this is a stunner. Nine to one the lead for Panama, which is outscored its first five games of World Baseball Classic history combined and still threatens with the bases loaded and nobody out here in the top of the sixth inning and a once raucous deafening Taichung Intercontinental Baseball Stadium has gone silent as Chinese Taipei goes to the bullpen yet again here in the sixth. We're gonna answer too, we asked the, the guys from Panama yesterday during the workout, hey, what would it take to take this crowd out of it? Sure enough, nine to one, definitely did that. Shake Yuan Wu is the new arm into the game in his home ballpark. CTBC Brothers pitcher, as you can see some versatility, 34 games last year, 15 of those out of the rotation. Yeah, you see some of those good numbers that, look, six seasons, a uh, 395 ERA, but he was a replacement. It's the guy who, the uh, strikeout numbers, he gets a lot of contact against him. One of the lowest strikeout rates. Replacing another another uh, pitcher, Seng Jen Ho, on this roster. Get some mop-up duty right now. And Jen Ho Tang removed due to lower back tightness. As this one has lays back up the middle. That's into center field for a base hit, and it could bring home that 10-run margin. It will. It's a two-run single for Erasmo Caballero, and Panama has a 10-run lead here in the sixth. It's 11-1. Tyler, we were not expecting this. We've said it multiple times now coming into this. We thought the Chinese Taipei could be that sneaky good team, upset someone. And they still can too. Look, it's only game one. And so the Czech Republic during those qualifiers. This sometimes it unravels just like this. We've got to regroup, we've got the day off tomorrow. Come back and figure things out. And on the flip side, man, what a performance by Luis Ortiz's group. And it hasn't just been, ah, oh, they've run into a few, they've gotten some big hits in big spots. I mean, this has just been methodical and now a grounder kicked out at second four six three they do turn the double play castillo is retired but ruben tejada is into third as a potential additional run to this 10 run lead and panama has now batted around here in the sixth as jose caballero who led off this inning over a half hour ago steps into the batter's box yeah, you mentioned some of the offense too, but what about some of the at bats early on? I mean, tough matchup. They had the starting pitcher who, and 
they had some good at bats to get him in that situation. They grinded him down. Then decided to keep his starter out there, linked him out. 60 plus pitches. Looked like he was absolutely gassed. But that comes from Panama with those good at bats, those deep 3 2 counts every time out. Panama sent all nine to the plate in the top of the fourth inning, scored five times. Ten men to the plate here in the sixth. Now, I know we had this conversation in Regensburg or Panama City. Batting around. Is that sending nine guys to the plate or ten guys to the plate? What did I say, nine? I I say nine. <laughs> Down the right field line. And that will do it. But Panama plates six more. We're headed to the bottom of the sixth inning, an 11 to 1 lead. Well, a game that was a nail-biter through the first three innings has turned into a very wide margin as we move into the bottom of the sixth. A 10-1 lead for Panama over Chinese Taipei in first pitch swinging. Kanyu Jong is retired on a ground out to second. One up and one down on one offering here in the sixth. And Ryan, it just looks like a Chinese Taipei team that is defeated at the moment. Oh, yeah. Again, played four games. This is something that you learn from guarantee the team probably has a little chat after the game just to remind everyone that we're all good with tomorrow off regroup press the reset button get after it on friday night on another packed house band still playing drums still banging away got a pitch hitter into the game for chinese taipei Backup catchers. Gungguan Giligalau. He matched Lee Lin's league lead in home runs last year. The CBBL going to work here against Severino Gonzalez. And a guy with a really fascinating backstory. He years ago changed his name to go by his aboriginal name rather than his Chinese name. He was known as Li Jen Chu until 2019. Played the Cleveland organization. Midwest League All-Star at the then Class A full season level back in 2017. Couple of games in AAA in 2018. Last time in affiliated ball was 2019 with AA Akron. And a guy who is trilingual, he pitches, pitches, he speaks English, Spanish, and Taiwanese. And for a catcher to be able to communicate with pitchers of all different stripes. That is so important and so impressive to command three different languages. He works a one-out walk in the bottom of the sixth. Defensive change for Panama. Johnny Santos takes over in right field for Luis Castillo. Were you a seeds guy? Did you choose seeds? Oh, yeah. Well, wait, did you go with a flavor? Or were you just like a straight up salt man? I mean, whatever was available, but oh, yeah, okay. I got stuck in the seeds for sure. It's just like you kind of get in the dugout. You know, obviously, not while I'm pitching. Yeah, I'm not going to be doing it. I mean, he's out there in right field, just crushing, crushing some seeds, but it's just that habitual thing. He's kind of in the dugout, watching the game, he just reach for the seeds. 
I would never eat seeds in any other environment, put it that way. <laughs> but you're in the dugout all of a sudden, like, yeah, I'll grab a bag. Wait a minute. I'm just, I'm just slugging seeds down at home, yeah. hanging out with the kids. <laughs> broadcast tomorrow afternoon noon local time looks like two one and oh teams will square off panama and the netherlands 11 p.m eastern time wednesday night thursday at noon our time and man after today that looks like a really really good matchup yeah i think panama's in such a good spot i mean still got jaime Maria. Looked off the glove of a leaping Dottiel Santa Maria and down the right field line that will bring in a run that cuts the deficit to nine for Chinese Taipei. So that could extend this game. As Sung Cha Chung comes through out of the top spot of the order. He stay alive for those extra innings. Avoiding the uh, early termination rule. Give this crowd just some little jolt of energy. Yeah, if you look at the way Panama, the position they're in right now, obviously they've got the Netherlands, we saw them win today. Like I said, you see what Jaime Berea with the Angels maybe starting that game. This crowd too, I mean, the team is down from this kind of deficit on their feet, making this kind of noise, this kind of energy. Runner will take second, Chung uncontested because of the difference. Take that bag. Chinese Taipei trying to extend this game, keep some hope alive. Nine run deficit as we take this game to the top of the seventh in Taichung. Some news items from around the start of the 2023 World Baseball Classic tomorrow. Australia and Korea kick off Pool B from the Tokyo Dome. So a little ways northeast of here. The United States behind Captain Mike Trout sets to roll against a really intriguing Great Britain team from Phoenix coming up on March 11th. And Pool D, the group of death, if you will, in this 2023 Classic, set to get started in Miami. First pitch swinging here in the top half of the seventh inning. One up, one down. Adiel Santa Maria flying out, his first time retired today. Yadio with a double in the third inning. Double to get his team on the board, later scored a run in the fourth. Actually, to add to that fourth inning, I should say, to get that scoring started, and then a walk and a run scored in the sixth for him. Panama with a nine run lead right now. If they can add another one and close out the bottom of the seventh without letting that lead dwindle under double digits, this game would wrap up as a shot in the air to right field is down for a base hit. Alan Cordoba has his first hit of the night on for the second straight time after reaching on an error last inning.
made their first two trips to the main tournament. And Luis Ortiz, you can see emphatically, given his yeah. guy the go sign, yeah. <laughs> Alan Cordoba. We have a good shot of, it, shot of it. You hear the crowd too. This is how engaged this crowd is and how switched on they are. They're booing right now. This is rare to hear boos, by the way, in Taiwan. They're so respectful to, doesn't matter if it's the opposing team, they kind of understand. Obviously, it's that unwritten rule of you don't take off, steal a bag when you're up by this many runs. But the early termination, you save pitches as well. There's a swing and a shot in the air to center field and racing over. Jiechen Chen will have to play that one out on the warning track as it took kind of a shallow angle to that ball. And Alan Cordoba scores easily from second base, and it is back to a 10 run lead now at 12 to 2. And Ryan, we talk about this a lot in the qualifiers as well. The run totals are really important too, because right if it does yeah. come down to tiebreakers, the yeah. amount of runs that you have scored will factor into potentially determining who moves on to the quarterfinals. So, yeah, it is rough to see somebody stealing against your team when you're down nine, but th these are all very important runs. Yeah, I was never a fan. I mean, even I get it. I mean, if you're up by a, a bunch, look, all right, don't be stealing bags if it's regular season, but when it's tournament style baseball, absolutely gloves are off. Luis Ortiz, go for it. Steal those bases, but you make a great point. Something you don't think about. When you're playing a round robin format, runs for and against are big, crucial elements when you when you do have those tied up. Uh, you see it right here again. Look, he's telling him, take off, take off. Let's go. <laughs> Even I would be able to understand that that's the <laughs> That's the sign to go in that circumstance. Now it's going to make it things happen with his legs. Christian Bethencourt retired. You can tell that all these guys, I think, are getting to a point, especially for Panama, having to turn around and play 14 hours from now, 13 and a half hours from now. Panama wants this game over with. Get back to the hotel, get some sleep. That was the early start of the steal signal. And then Luis Ortiz, go! <laughs> Yeah, you certainly understand the, the frustration or the offense taken by these Chinese Taipei fans, but in a tournament format like this, all of these runs hugely important, and especially to get to a stage where when you do have to turn around 13 and a half hours from now, yeah. you can try to wrap this thing up early, plus the pitcher restrictions, you're gonna be able to save an arm or two perhaps by not playing the eighth or ninth if you can close this out in the seventh. Yeah, we've already seen on display. It doesn't matter who you start in these games. You can see him have a chat about it. Yeah, you look at this, 50 plus pitches thrown, four days rest. Essentially, you are, you are done for pool play. Put it that way. I mean, we've seen some of the pitches already out for the rest of this pool play because they've gone 50 plus pitches. Fair play is such a factor, 65 maximum. Jose Ramos foul ground first base side. You take over there to make the grab, and that'll do it for the top half of the seventh inning. It's stretch time here in Taijung. Panama back out in front by 10. This copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of World Baseball Classic Incorporated and it may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form in the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Bottom of the seventh inning here in Taijung as Panama tries to close out a stunningly impressive day one victory, a 12 to two lead over the host squad from Chinese Taipei. And remember the early termination rule, a lead for any team of 10 runs or more after the completion of seven innings will result in the early calling of that game. So for Panama, all you need is three more outs without anything else across. And the new arm into the game for Panama to try to get the job done is the right-hander, Wilfredo Pereira. And 23 years old, St. Louis Cardinals system. Still in A-ball. He's had six seasons in the minor leagues. Chance to finish this one off. Here in the seventh, ball to lead. Those numbers five ERA last year. 
seven games. Sanchez is having the game behind the plate. Sanchez out of Panama City. So the day done for Yadiel Santa Maria. Really good day for him out of the nine spot in the order for Panama. And Bethencourt, the veteran. Did you rock the wedding band under your glove? Just notice Bethencourt's got his on. No. Nah. Oh, oh, no, <laughs> that's a good push up. It always interests me. I've seen some guys do that. Of course, nowadays, so many guys will wear, you know, the rubber right. ring or something else, those sport bands, but it's always interested me when you see guys do that in various sports. Well, one pitch there for a call strike, it's only two. Yu Chang. Yu Chang, the RBI single in the fifth inning to get Chinese Taipei on the board. And that was when we really felt like, all right, now maybe this is going to turn into a game. It was 5-1 then, but Panama pouring on six runs in the top of the sixth. Chinese Taipei got one back to push this game into the seventh at a nine-run deficit. Panama added on. There is tonight's starter, Chi Wei Lu. Obviously not what he was hoping for tonight. And ball left side. It's going to be a real tough play. Caballero's throw is not going to be in time to get Yu Chang a one out infield single. Yu Chang showing up that speed. Still, yeah, 10 nothing. Still hustling down the line. Weak contact all over the place. Just not getting anything going. Not stringing anything together, this Chinese Taipei team. A good play there by Jose Caballero, but too much speed for Yu Chang. First fastball there for a strike out of the five spot. It's Nintin Wu. Again. Panama 0 and 5 in its first five World Baseball Classic games ever with seven combined runs scored. Tonight, a 12 spot on 13 hits. Every single starter in Panama's lineup has scored at least one run. Trying to get this inning on legs for Chinese Taipei. Balls in a strike. I haven't told you a lot about Wilfredo Pereira as of yet. Enters this game here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Pereira, St. Louis Cardinals prospect. Spent last season at High A Peoria. And away. Three balls in a strike. Member of the qualifier squad, but he did not pitch in the qualifier in those two games. Scouting report for Wilfredo Pereira. 
Yeah, look at that low 90s fastball. Only six foot. The biggest guy out there on the mound. 24 years old. Big prospect with the St. Louis Cardinals. Now, one thing, just going back to that offense too, you think about with Panama. Up and down the lineup, all nine starters tonight getting hits, getting on the board, getting that feel, getting that rhythm back, that timing. So crucial in short four game formats. And get that feel, not only get the win that first game. Fly ball well struck in the air to center field, moving back on it is Ramos, and that ball is gone. And he gets his team a little closer. It's an eight-run deficit now in the seventh. And this team which just will not go down quietly, literally. Look at that early termination staring down the barrel of being done here at seven innings. Bruce says, no, we're playing nine. Ball before you need that last little. Something to leave this game going into Friday evening with some kind of positive. Something to walk away saying, you know what, we're okay. Went down by a lot early. But just something, just to get some sort of momentum going into game two. It's a fastball right down the middle, sitting fastball. Crush the ball. Right side of the field. We kind of compared this to the Czech Republic's first game in Regensburg. And in that game, Czech Republic was down at one point. 18 to 3 or something yeah. like that. But what they yeah, that, did. Yeah, that was staring down the 15th run. Yeah, that's and right. rallied with three home runs that kept that game alive. Ended up losing and losing big. And now a butt left side is going to put a base runner aboard as Po Young Wong finds a creative way on. These fans not going away. It's not Po Young Wong, it's a pinch hitter. That's Shen Wei Chen on in place of the star left fielder, but following the homer, a base runner aboard now. Look at this bunting, huge deficit. We talked about some of the unwritten rules in baseball. We saw the, the steal on the base being down, uh, excuse me, being up by 10. This crowd started booing. All of a sudden you see him bunting. Down by a huge deficit. But again, you throw all those unwritten rules out the window in tournament play, you want that momentum. You want base runners? Every at back counts. Pinch hitters galore coming on now. Wei Chun Long will take the at bat here in the spot of Kun Yu Jung. But yeah. you're not giving up in a game like this, especially with this crowd behind you for Chinese Taipei. No, you're not taking any at bat for granted either. Obviously, look at everyone on the top step of that dugout, too. No one's sneaking down the tunnel. Now, all of a sudden, too, Panama's got the bullpen going again. Expect to come back, obviously down still by eight runs, but you want to roll into game two with something to lean on, some sort of offense. Interesting too. I've been in these situations where you kind of, if you're in the bullpen, you can't put your feet up thinking, I'm not going to pitch tonight. You know, it's going to be a 10, a 10 run rule or I'm not going to get into this game. All of a sudden, within minutes, things change. You have to change your mindset and be like, oh, well, I'm going to go out and compete. It's going to get interesting here, maybe a little closer with Matt Hardy. Can't. He has to come in this game and he can't quite get in that rhythm. 
might happen. This is incredible, man. The way this crowd has come back to life here with a couple of runs across and a man on. It's a bouncing ball right side will turn into the lead out at second base. Chen Wei Chen retired. Wei Chen Wong will reach on the fielder's choice. And now two gone. Well, Gilly Galau will step into the batter's box. Try to keep this inning alive. Gilly Galau entered last inning as a pinch hitter on in place of UJ Gao, the starting catcher. Seventh. But the two run shot from Yen Sing Wu keeps this game alive. We head to the eighth. 12 4, Panama with the lead. Back in 2006, Chinese Taipei got off to a less than ideal start of the inaugural World Baseball Classic with losses to South Korea and Japan, but finished the tournament with a big win over China. 12 to 3 at the Tokyo Dome, the final thanks to a big day from Young Chi Chen. Four for six, a home run, three doubles, driving in five. And as we move this game along to the top of the eighth inning, a new arm into the game for Chinese Taipei as Quan Yu Chen will take over on the mound. Another Rackets and Monkeys pitcher. There you see the 307, 23 downs. I was going to say, are they going to go up 10 runs again? <laughs> Rope off the bat of Ruben Zahada, out number one. Holy crush. You can tell right now, you know, we talked about it in the last couple innings. This Panama team, they turn around and play at noon tomorrow. They really want to get out of here. They really want to get out of here with a win more than anything, but they really want to get out of here. A lot of very early aggressive swings. Yeah, get those extra hours of sleep. Keep that bullpen rested. Looks like we're gonna play nine though. Like you said though, just get that win. Caballero. The Rasmus Caballero. Take strike one. Panama threw its first three innings at the plate tonight. Three hits, no runs. And five runs on five hits in the fourth. Six runs on three hits in the sixth. Batted around in that inning, sent 10 to the plate. Added another run in the seventh. We thought that might be enough to get this game wrapped up early. But Taipei continues the fight. Two run over in the bottom of the seventh inning by Yenting Wu. Let's keep this game going. Rasmus Caballero, one for three tonight. RBI oh, single in the sixth inning. Oh, 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 it's really interesting the parallels between this game and that Czech Republic game, though, on day number one of the Regensburg qualifier. A team just getting rocked, but able to generate some late energy in that game. And, you know, Chinese Taipei still has time to work with. Czech Republic didn't win that game. They did win the rematch later on with Spain to move into the World Baseball Classic here in 2023. This is an entirely different format. There will be a rematch between these two teams as Caballero takes ball four. 
I think when you look at it through the fact, that, and this is what makes it tough for Chinese Taipei. Right, Granny, you, you go down 12 to 4. Let's say you go down 12 to 4 to Cuba or the Netherlands, one of the favorites, Luis Ortiz. We're here trying to let the umpire know we're making a change, but so we're going to see Santos. But, uh, or a pinch runner, excuse me. Yeah, Edgar Munoz will take up the spot at first. But the fact that you're going down this much to kind of the mid-tier team when it comes to who are the favorites, who are going to be the tough matchups. So let's not forget, you, if you're trying to start play, you obviously you got to play Italy, but you still have to play the Netherlands, you still have to, you still have to play Cuba. You get those tough matchups against the big teams in this pool. This game passed three and a half hours right now. We got started at 7:11 local time this evening, nearing 10:45 p.m. right now. A lot of baseball today on a really fun day number one of this 2023 World Baseball Classic here in Taichung. Pitch on the way to Santos, who came on in place of Luis Castillo last inning. Two balls and a strike. Yu Chen on for his first inning of work out of the bullpen. And ground ball left side. That's through for a base hit. So Johnny Santos off the bench, entering as a defensive replacement, powers his first hit of the classic through the left side. Man, this pitching staff just has no answers, top to bottom. Juan Yu Chen, been around for a long time, 32 years old, 11 seasons. Playing professionally seven seven years in the uh, in Japan as well. Okay, the 2017 World Baseball Classic. And don't look now, but. Yet again, the potential 10th run of a 10-run lead is on the base paths for Panama, which has had a couple of different opportunities to close out this win via the early termination rule. Go by the wayside. Chinese Taipei a run in the sixth. It's got the deficit down at nine. Panama got it back to 10 with a run in the top of the seventh. Two-run homer for Yentek Wu in the bottom of the seventh for Chinese Taipei. Keeping this thing going at an eight-run margin. Caballero trying to kill up by three. Get that fifteen mark. In any other circumstance, we've hopped on this quite a bit. Any other situation, be a little different. But you are still, still going to see guys taking bases, being aggressive. For all those reasons you pointed out, Tyler. Absolutely, put your foot on the gas. Save your arms. Get the bet. Get some extra slip. Yeah, turn around to that noon game tomorrow. How about this? Number that are 
Sergio Anthony Orza just turned up. Panama tonight, eight for 19 with runners in scoring position. I'd be interested to know how many at bats with runners in scoring position Panama had combined through its first five WBC games. Only scored seven total runs. 19 at bats with runners in scoring position tonight. This is number 20. And they will be back at it tomorrow in just over 13 hours. Panama in the Netherlands. This Netherlands team, probably back in the hotel right now. Guys are asleep, guys are watching this game. Feeling good about the fact they got the early one wrapped up today. Four to two win over Cuba. They're thinking, yeah, let Panama run around all night. We're fine with that. There's a Caballero awaiting. Fouls that one at the dish. Prospect that wide stance in the right handed batter's box. Takes a call strike three. Talk about the production that runs in the scoring position. But I mean, another factor as well, we talked about some of the at bats. That's only the sixth strikeout for this Panamanian team. They've been hard to put away with two strikes. Two gone now. And it sends us to the ninth spot in the order. In which Carlos Sanchez now resides. Yadiel Santa Maria getting the start in this game at first base. Lifted as Christian Bethencourt moved to first. Carlos Sanchez takes ball one. That career in the minors last year was 2014. Nine years ago. Good block there by Gilligalau behind the plate. say that nobody in this building has left, but there are a ton of people still here tonight. Crowd upwards of 20,000 for this game. It is a school mark. Very good point. Ground ball out to second. Should do it for Panama the eighth, and it does. As Sanchez retired, and that'll send us to the bottom of the eighth inning, a 12-4 Panama lead. the afternoon game today from here inside John you missed a good one as the Kingdom of the Netherlands kicked off this 2023 World Baseball Classic Tom to block getting a huge double play ball in the first inning Josh Palacios coming through for his team John Dito Trump doing the same check out Chadwick Trump the younger brother John Dito Trump also on the roster doing the same four to two win for the Netherlands which has been back at the hotel chilling for a little while waiting for who their opponent will be tomorrow in the noon game. Yeah, and, and we talked about this during that noon game. The, the, usually day one takes a little bit for the offense to get the rhythm. Obviously not the case tonight, 12 to four. This has been a marathon of the game, nearly reaching, really reaching the four hour mark. You see Matt Hardy coming on late in this one, 3 A ERA, double A, triple A with the Brewer system. But that game today, Cuba just got shut down. They had something moving in that first inning. That big double play you mentioned, top the block, that was it. 
just enough from uh, the Netherlands to get that offense going. I guarantee you that they are watching this Panama team. So, man, this is a tough thing to strike out. They've got some momentum going right now. They've put up some big numbers. It's going to be a tough matchup for the Netherlands. Regardless of what that infield is, too. We had some fun with, obviously, Xander Bogarts. Fresh off his 11-year, $280 million deal. Jonathan Scope. Simmons. Cuba ended that game with three hits today. We talked so much about the weapons in that lineup. Fly ball in the air to left field. Now number one, as Alan Porta settles on her. Just three hits today. And not to mention, too, Panama. We talked about obviously the big 12 runs and everyone getting offense up and down the, the lineup. But you got Jaime Berea, Angels right hander on the mound tomorrow as well. And yes, there is pitch restrictions, but. It's off to a good start. They're in a good spot. Matt Hardy, one of the few non-native born Panamanian players on this roster, but man, he has got some very cool baseball roots in Panama. A guy whose grandfather, Ossie Javaria, played in the major leagues, as well as the Panamanian national team. Ossie played 1966 and 67 with Kansas City Athletics. David Javaria, Matt Hardy's uncle, played seven seasons in the minors in the Giants and Rangers systems. And I'm just now remembering that we told Matt Hardy's mom, yes, during the World Baseball Classic qualifiers in Panama City, don't worry, next time we see him in Look at those notes in as a line drive out of the air to center is over the head of Ramos and all the way to the wall, flying into third base. Sung Chin Chang has got himself a one out triple. They will not go down quietly with this Chinese Taipei team over there in that first base dugout. And again, the crowd's on their feet. Chance still cranking here as we approach 11 p.m. local time. The ball definitely flies at night. That is something that we now know for the next four days compared to the daytime. Yeah, that's right. Matt, that's what I was thinking about. Matt Hardy, was it his, and a big shout out to his mom if, if she is listening. We didn't get the notes in and she was upset with us. It was a but, very quick appearance. He worked a really quick right. inning. Didn't get a chance to talk about his grandpa, but I mean, what a cool connection to this national team and the Panamanian baseball for Matt Hardy, the Brewers prospect. Matt split time between AA and AAA last year in the Brewers organization. Spent the offseason with Caguas in the Puerto Rican Winter League. 25 games, a 0.64 ERA, 29 strikeouts against three walks in 28 innings. He's going to work here against Lee Lynn, the MVP. score, but Matt Hardy will gladly take that. Second out recorded on the put out there by Arauz. And with two gone, Chinese Taipei, you look at these exhibition games they played against CPBL teams, and you know, granted the national team obviously is an all-star team, and you're playing CPBL regular rosters down some of their best players, but 10-0, outscoring opponents by 57 runs over that run. Yeah, look at that. And again, you talk about the lead up. We talked about Cuba kind of falling flat and the manager as well getting, getting into him about focusing. A lot of them out, you know, shopping, you know, doing all kinds of stuff outside of baseball. But when you have that kind of lead into a tournament, you usually feel pretty good about yourself. But you know how it goes, spring training. See some different performances once the lights go on in April, things change. Ground ball over to first. And no panic there from Christian Bethancourt after the initial bobble, and that will do it for Chinese Taipei in the eighth. This game is headed to the ninth. Panama in control in Taichung. And the pitch. He got him. Yankees win. It is gone. Carlos 
Ruiz guns down Melvin Upton. Carlos Lee with a three-run homer. Number 13 for El Caballo. Some of the legends of Panamanian baseball as we carry this game into the top half of the ninth inning. Panama on a brilliant night. A 12-5 lead over Chinese Taipei. And it's still some time to try to add to this lead as Alan Cordoba will lead things off out of the top spot in the order for Panama. Look at that package, Ryan. There's two guys in that package who are classic. Yeah, I forgot how good that guy really was. Yeah. Carlos Ruiz and Carlos Lee. Yeah, for sure. Both guys. We got a chance to talk to Carlos Lee in Panama City as you get a look at Chia Hao Sung, who takes over on the pitcher's mound for Chinese Taipei, the racket to Golden Eagles pitcher in Nippon Professional Baseball in Japan. Carlos Lee, brilliant player throughout his career, and Chuch Ruiz was the same way, and not just an offensive guy, but obviously what he worked with behind the plate throughout his career, an incredible time in Major League Baseball. Yeah, you hear a lot of pitchers who got a chance to throw to Chuch, Carlos Ruiz, and talk about how he just made them better. He was one of those guys behind the plate who just enhanced what you were able to do on the mound. And Mariano Rivera, I think maybe, hey, look, coming out to throw out the first pitch, maybe that was, maybe that was that spark they needed, this Panamanian team. Look at what they've done. Their first W. They can hold on to this lead, but 12 to 5. Coming out strong here, game one, 2023. Alec Cordoba, one for four tonight. He's been aboard three times, though, and he crushes this one in the air to center field. Hang up there for Jin Chen. Actually, take that back. Chip to center field. That is Chen Wen Chen. Make that grab. Lead off man is gone. I wonder if Marion is stuck around. What do you think? I was wondering how long he was hanging around. Probably still here waiting for Ryan Wilson's yeah, autograph. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Sorry, sorry. It was a while back that we saw Mariano Rivera throw in his uh, first pitch. He had enough time for a return flight to Panama City. I think here, it, here it is. Is this a cutter he's about to throw right now? Or? Has to be. Has to be, right? Has to be, right? Let's have a look. Look at that. Look at that lightning hut. That's breaking bats. It's only right now. Speaking of cut, <laughs> good a shape as Mari cut a repair in. Oh, I thought you were talking about me. <laughs> well, you know, you're not wrong. Yeah, look at him. Seriously, that's got some cutting action on it. And how cool that he gets to throw that to his former Yankees teammate, yeah. Chen Ming Wong, behind the plate. Bouncing ball left side. Is, is retired. Two goals. I have officially run out of spots in my scorebook for new relievers into the game. Eight pitchers. Cha Hao Sung, seven pitches into his day. But you will notice nobody outside of the starter, Chi Wei Hu, has exceeded that 30 pitch threshold. Right. And they do have the off day tomorrow, Chinese Taipei, but. Still, you got everybody pretty well fresh going into Friday. Yeah, get the, knock the rust off. Obviously, the games that count. They've, they've been you know, getting games they do this, and we question some of the decisions that Lin, the, the Chinese Taipei manager, made. The lack of decisions, but get everyone out there, get, get a feel, and also too, hey, listen, I know it's been a long game, and you know, they're down by a bunch, but good chance for us to see them too. The, we came into this. We did a, a, a lot of prep. It's easy to do prep on guys like Xander Bogarts, Jerickson Profar, and Andrelton Simmons, etc. But when you're trying to prep and learn some of the guys you're going to see, especially these next couple of days, we had a chance to see everyone. You see what they're made of. Some of the back end guys. Christian Bethencourt in the air to right center. Chun is there. Heading over. Three outs to go for Panama to clinch its first World Baseball Classic win ever. Come on back for the bottom of the ninth from Taichung.
Six years ago, the United States captured its first ever World Baseball Classic Championship 2,176 days ago, to be exact. I was there watching those guys celebrate at Dodger Stadium, their first WBC crown in USA Baseball fields. Maybe the most talented USA Baseball roster in the history of the Federation for this 2023 Classic. They'll get started in pool C from Phoenix, Arizona. One of the Arizona Diamondbacks coming up later on this week. As Justin Lawrence enters this game, Colorado Rockies relief pitcher. But man, we've got a lot of loaded rosters, maybe no more loaded than the United States. Yeah, especially that offense too. And you go back to that 2017 team, we had a chance to talk to Adam Jones about this. And I feel like 2017 was the turning point for the, the World Baseball Classic as a whole, not just for Team USA, but when you can get that kind of roster put together, you see right here, put out, first out of the inning, but when you can get that kind of roster put together, it just legitimizes this tournament in general, I think, from a world perspective. But seeing all these guys put their hands up, even in the midst of the 2022 season, committing, we see the, the slow rollout of all over social media, but I don't even know where to start. I'm looking at this like, you know, JT Rumuto behind the plate, Peter Alonso, Tim Anderson, Nolan Arenado, Goldsmith. I mean, where do you start? Obviously, Mike Trout, insane. I mean, it is an all-star team. This is as good of a team as USA Baseball has ever put together at any level. And the thing that's crazy is, you can say that for the Dominican Republic team. Now, obviously, they take a hit with no Black Guerrero Jr., but that team, absolutely loaded. Japan, absolutely loaded. The Netherlands coming out with a win today. One of the best in fields, as our good friend J.P. Morosi said on the roster reveal show on MLB Network, he said this might be one of the best in fields ever put together in a baseball yeah. game anywhere. There are just so many of these rosters that you look at and think, what is the weakness? Is there a weakness yeah. here? Now, I think, too, and, you know, I'm just glancing over the, the Team USA roster or Dominican Republic. These are rosters that, you know, when you, when you look at the way teams are made up, obviously the Padres coming out spending a ton of money. The big market teams spend all that money. But no team, no organization can put together this kind of roster. This is a roster money cannot buy. And it's put together because of that that situation of obviously you represent your country. It's kind of like that that dream uh, structure. You take a look right here at the pools and look, we're in pool A right here in Taiwan to the left there. The most evenly matched really is. And now Panama, all of a sudden, they're a uh, they're a factor because of what they've done tonight and what they could do against the Netherlands tomorrow. This is going to be a fun couple of weeks of baseball. We'll be getting started tomorrow, which is really just later today for those of you tuned in right now in the United States. Stephen Nelson and Jose Moto will be on the call from the Tokyo Dome as Australia and Korea tee it up for game number one. And we'll be right back here tomorrow morning. Get things started at noon local time. Game number three from here inside John. Tyler, speaking of Australia, I just got a text from Liam Hendricks. Talk about he's been tuning in, so a big shout out to Liam Hendricks. I hope you're doing well. Looking forward to seeing him back on the big stage very soon. One of the absolute best guys in the game of baseball, Liam Hendricks. So I met once a long time ago when he was a young guy coming up in the minor leagues, and I was hanging out at the Canelli Brothers house in Perth. And, uh, Liam, uh, a guy who's a Western Australia baseball legend as Justin Lawrence finishes off the final out in a game that took four hours and one minute. It was worth every moment of the wait for this Panama national team. Congratulations to Luis Ortiz and his squad. The first win for Panama in the history of the World Baseball Classic and a very impressive one tonight. And for Chinese Taipei, someone back to the drawing board. Yeah, it really is. And I'm not, I'm not gonna say this is an upset, but this was shocking. I wasn't expecting this kind of lopsided score, but Panama, they are now a factor. I think the big storyline here for this game was the young pitching from Chinese Taipei just couldn't throw start the strikes when it counted and Panama ran away with it. Now they've got all kinds of momentum heading into the uh, battle they're gonna have against uh, Netherlands tomorrow. And it is a real quick turnaround for this Panama team. 
13 hours away from first pitch for game number two tomorrow at noon local time later tonight 11 p.m eastern time back in the united states don't miss our continuing coverage of pool a from intercontinental baseball stadium here inside jug team panama will be right back at it as they face xander bogarts and the kingdom of the netherlands in a matchup of one and oh teams for ryan roland smith and our entire crew my name is tyler mon saying goodbye for now and thanks for watching our presentation of the 2023 world baseball classic Thank you.